It's Free Talk Live. You may join us here toll free. We'll give you the numbers here in a moment. We've also got Skype as well with you in the studio tonight. It's Ian and Mark. And of course, we've got a website. Go and get interactive over there at freetalklive.com where you, the listener, get to decide what's there on the front page. You get to vote on uh, various different items that other listeners have submitted. You yourself may submit things right there to the front page through our Reddit-based system. So go get interactive for free over at freetalklive.com. It's uh, it's kind of been like a theme weekend here on Free Talk Live. Last night, we discussed some free speech-related issues with a young man getting in trouble for running a Twitter account that was in favor of ISIS. And I've got some other free speech-related news here tonight because, well, the truth is you really don't have free speech in the United States. You have a semblance of it, a resemblance of free speech. It, uh, you know, to somebody who's not paying close attention, it appears to be a place in which free speech is treasured and honored and respected. You're told you have free speech. You're told that it's enshrined in the uh, the, the Bill of Rights. Um, and you're able to put, you know, your favorite baseball team's bumper sticker on the back of your car. So, you know, what? Yeah, and, and most of the time where you are and what you say generally doesn't tend to matter. Except when what you say happens to threaten the interests of the state. And, of course, this should be one of the areas in which free speech is most protected. In theory, that's one of the reasons why it was enshrined as the First Amendment or a portion of the First Amendment uh, to the U.S. Constitution's Bill of Rights. The, you know, the idea was that uh, coming from the old kingdom, if you will, coming from uh, the U.K. with the, the king at the time, was it George III? King George III, I believe. Second? Uh, whoever it was. Some tyrant. Uh, you know, that was the kind of person who would possibly hang you or shoot you for speaking against him. I think it's also worth uh, mentioning that, uh, you know, thinking about uh, what we talked about last night, uh, this young man with the Twitter account was sort of supporting, verbally supporting ISIS and telling people how they can donate and um, giving people advice on how they could go over to Syria to fight. You know, yeah, I didn't uh, want to rehash uh, well, last I'm just night's story. Mentioning it, uh, one thing that's worth uh, thinking about is is the founding fathers uh, teamed with uh, Great Britain's uh, biggest enemy to France. fight them. Yeah, France, yeah. and uh, you know to fight them, and that's kind of interesting. Uh, what's that have to do with free speech? I'm missing that. It just, I was just thinking about yesterday's show regarding free speech and this person right. who is uh, sort of supporting ISIS. Um, George Washington supported uh, okay. his government's greatest enemy. I gotcha. And, uh, you know, the uh, the king at the time would likely punish you real harsh-like if you spoke out against him. So one of the ideas behind the First Amendment was, hey, we should have a place where people can criticize the government. We should have a place where people are free to say what they want in public spaces. Now, of course, this doesn't apply, as we discussed previously, it does not apply to private property. So if you're in a movie theater... Shouting fire is unacceptable because that's private property and that's their rules. If there's not an actual fire, you're not allowed to do that kind yeah, of thing. You should be asked to leave the property right. if some, such a thing happens. And if your actions result in someone being harmed, you should be held responsible Liable. for your actions. Right, if someone gets trampled in the movie theater, uh, right. run now, out. By the way, I have seen people yell fire in a crowded movie theater really? and it doesn't work. Like, nobody gets up and runs out. Huh, I've Somehow, never seen that. This isn't, well, uh, you know, this isn't, this is just young people having, doing young people yeah. things, right? You know, apparently, people, when you yell fire in a crowded theater, don't just get up and run towards the exits and, you know, stomp on babies in the process. You mean they actually uh, take an assessment of their situation? They're like looking around and say, oh, that young man down there is a jerk. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so, you know, this should be a place where you're allowed to criticize the government. But unfortunately, it seems to be that in more and more cases, uh, people who are doing that, people who are trying to inform people of their rights, for instance, are being cracked down upon and they're being arrested. And that's what's been happening out in Denver up until or as of within the last few weeks. We've talked a few times here on Free Talk Live thus far about the situation in Denver where a couple of guys were arrested for doing jury nullification outreach there. Now, jury nullification is your right as a juror to vote your conscience in a case. So if you think that the law is bad, let's say you're sitting on a jury of a marijuana case, you think that the drug laws are stupid and they should be abolished, well, you as a juror can abolish it right there on the spot, at least in that case. You can vote not guilty, despite even though the, person, the evidence. Yeah, even though the person might be guilty of the possession or whatever of marijuana, um, you as a juror have the right to simply nullify the law in that case. So that's a threat to the status quo. 
It's part of the system. Jury nullification is an ages-old right that surpasses the United States. It's just sort of like a Western judicial system thing that uh, has existed for a long time. And they don't want you to know that. The people that are working in the courthouse, the police, everybody inside the system, they're really, really unfriendly towards jury nullification in a lot of places. And Denver apparently is one of the worst. Yeah, jury nullification is essentially a threat to the lawyer industrial complex. If you think yeah. about the legal system in the United States, you look at the legislative branch in 49 states and the Washington, D.C., you see basically lawyers. You know, there might be some small percentage of other people, but basically it's lawyers. Um, you see the people sitting up on the, the benches in the judicial system, lawyers. A lot of people who have held the office of president and certainly a lot of people who are powerful within the executive branch, lawyers. It's lawyers everywhere. And what do you think lawyers think about lay people interpreting the law? They hate the idea. Well, you don't have the right education. What do you know? Right. I mean, and I get it. I get Their the position. idea. A mechanic wouldn't want you, um, you know, thinks that he's better qualified to fix your car than you are, and he's likely right. However, we're not talking about something that either runs or doesn't run. The law hasn't run for, um, you know, as long as it's been around. It is an opinion written down by the lawyer industrial complex. And backed by men with guns who usually don't even understand the opinions. So... The latest from Denver, where, again, two people were arrested previously uh, for jury nullification outreach, and then a judge put into place a ridiculous order banning all manner of uh, free speech outside the courthouse, on anywhere on the courthouse grounds. Uh, we also had a story about the town attorney or the city attorney ordering, or not, I guess maybe he can't order them, but telling the city police and the county police to not arrest people for doing jury nullification outreach. So we discussed this within the last week. Now there's an update. So we talked about this on Monday or Tuesday. Well, it turns out Wednesday afternoon this week in Denver, civil rights attorney, this from Fija.org, David Lane of uh, Kilmer, Lane & Newman, filed on behalf of Fija and co-plaintiffs Eric Verlo and Janet Matson a motion for order to show cause why Robert C. White should not be held in contempt of court for apparent retaliation by the Denver Police Department. Just hours after a motion for injunction was granted, prohibiting further arrests for sharing jury nullification information at the Lindsay Flanagan Courthouse, Denver conducted a mid-morning raid on juror rights educators at the courthouse. So there was an order issued by, I believe, a federal judge prohibiting further arrests for jury nullification. This is an injunction from a judge. Yeah. And the police showed up anyway and cracked down on the jury outreach. At approximately 10 a.m., this is an excerpt from the motion, a, ca a cadre of Denver police officers swarmed into the group of pamphleteers and began seizing items from them. So the this is contrary to the federal judge's injunction? Well, uh, basically, yes. Okay. Uh, the items seized, they're going to have their excuse, right? I'll, I'll share you with you their reason for this. The items seized included, but are not limited to the following, all literature regarding jury nullification, including about 1,000 pamphlets, a small shade shelter, so one of those 10 by 10 yep. shelters set up, a table, four chairs, buckets, a cooler, signs, and other items. So basically, they took the entire outreach booth. While on scene, the police attempted to take personal property, such as purses, computers, backpacks, and other items. Do you think that... Uh, I I mean, I, I'm just thinking about this, the shade, uh, the, the 10 by 10 tent, mm -hmm. the chairs, these kind of things. Do you think that's going overboard for a protest or pamphleting or something like that? It just seems to me like that's a bit much. I mean, you're essentially setting up housekeeping for a period of time there. Um, what do you think? Well, it's not my style, but uh, I don't think there's any problem with it. It's public property. Well, it's, yeah, I mean, it's like on the courthouse lawn, right? Well, there's actually a picture of it, and I'll, I'll uh, share this on our Facebook and Twitter, and you can see how much space this is taking up. Because essentially, this is the argument, Mark, they're going to make, is that this is an encumbrance. This thing is in the way. Well, if it's on the grass, I don't know if it's in the way. but It doesn't appear to be on the grass. It appears to be a part of a very large plaza, and I will uh, show you here in a moment. Okay. We'll put it on our Facebook and Twitter. We'll continue the story. Our toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. Every once in a while, you get information that's worth changing your life for. This is one such time. You can save up to and beyond 25% on all purchases at Amazon. You probably heard of Bitcoin and just not thought much about it. 
you certainly know that you can get competitive pricing at Amazon, but now you can get a 25% discount on nearly everything you need to live. I've just given you a huge raise, and all you have to do is claim it. You go to purse.freetalklive.com and open an account. Do this right now. Don't wait. Then you fund the account with Bitcoin. You can buy them through expresscoin.com with a check or money order. There are other ways to get Bitcoin, but that's fast, safe, and easy. This information is worth you changing the way you do things. Go to purse.freetalklive.com right now and get signed up and cash in on the huge raise I'm offering you. 25% off of everything on Amazon through purse.freetalklive.com. It's purse.freetalklive.com. No! That's the sound your brain makes when you realize you're buying something and forgot the coupon. Online or in a store, knowing that you're missing a deal is the worst. You need the app from Retail Me Not right now. Get thousands of coupons from 50,000 stores like Kohl's, Domino's, Best Buy, and more with crazy deals like 60% off, free shipping, and free gifts with purchase. You can get a text invite to download the Retail Me Not app 100% free right now for Apple or Android. Just text the code UPDATE to 42767. Then just show your phone at checkout to save. It literally couldn't be easier. It's 2015. Keep your coupon in your phone. Stop what you're doing and text UPDATE to 42767. Listeners will get a text with a link to download it 100% free. Never forget another coupon again. Text the code UPDATE to 42767 right now. That's UPDATE to 42767. Message and data rates may apply. For terms and privacy, visit RetailMeNot.com. Hey, Berkey Guy here. Are you still drinking unfiltered tap water? Does your water contain chlorine or fluoride? Will you have drinkable water in an emergency? The Berkey Guy is here to help you remove these and other potential contaminants from your water, thus helping you drink clean, purified water. We offer Berkey water purification systems at the lowest available prices online. Don't go another moment without Berkey System. Over the last 10 years, we've helped thousands drink clean, purified water. Join them by visiting GoBerkey.com or call me, the Berkey Guy, at 877-886-3653. That's 877-886-3653. Hi, this is Walt Augustinowitz. I'm the founder and CEO of ID Stronghold. By now you've heard our commercials about wallets that protect you from electronic pickpocketing. Ten years ago, I created a way to protect my own cards from prying eyes after government officials started talking about issuing a national ID card with a built-in radio chip called RFID. I felt having to broadcast my personal information was an invasion of privacy. Soon after, it was also announced that credit cards, debit cards, U.S. passports, hotel room keys, and even transit passes would all soon incorporate RFID. It was then I formed ID Stronghold to share my inventions in blocking RFID signals with the world. There are a lot of misconceptions out there today about RFID. I encourage everyone to get informed and get protected. Please go to IDStronghold.com and get the facts and the wallet sleeves or badge holders you need to protect your personal financial data. You'll be pleasantly surprised that through our direct sales model, you won't pay more than other comparable unprotected wallets. It is as though the protection is free. Visit IDStronghold.com today. Paid non-attorney spokesperson Adam Pulaski of the Pulaski Law Firm with principal office in Houston, Texas is the attorney responsible for the content of this ad. This ad is not legal advice and the choice of a lawyer should not be based solely upon advertisement. Services may not be available in all states. Attention Zarelto users. If you or a loved one took Zarelto and suffered a serious bleeding event, you may be entitled to financial compensation. Zarelto is a popular prescription blood thinner used to prevent blood clots and protect patients from strokes. These serious bleeding events have led to numerous cases of hospitalization and even death. Phone lines are open 24-7. Call 800-261-0937. That's 800-261-0937. Now, more Free Talk Live. Call in toll-free at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-FREE. This is Free Talk Live. Live Sunday edition continuing here. You can bring up anything that... Is on your mind. We're talking about the crackdown here from uh, Denver police continuing in the face of an order from a judge to not arrest people for doing jury nullification outreach in Denver. Um, they apparently did not actually arrest people, but they cracked down upon them as much as they could anyway by stealing all of their stuff. And we'll tell you more about exactly what transpired here in a few moments. Our toll-free number, if you want to join the show, 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. And we've got Skype. Skype username here, lrn.fm. There's a movement today in healthcare. It's a movement of people that's ready to stand up and take charge of their healthcare. It's people like you. 
and me who are tired of paying too much for health care and getting too little. People who are standing up for their values and letting their conscience make decisions based on timeless principles. It's a movement that's sweeping the nation, and you need to be part of it. Liberty HealthShare is leading the movement of people who are looking for an alternative to traditional health insurance. Liberty HealthShare is a healthcare sharing organization of people who are sharing the costs of healthcare in an easy and efficient way. And that's really the key there. There's uh, very little overhead when it comes to Liberty HealthShare. You can choose your doctor, you can choose your hospital, you can live out your values in healthcare. Um, I found that this is right for me and my family. You need to check it out for yourselves. We're saving nearly half. Um, it's, it's like our costs are nearly half uh, of what they would be. So, libertyhealthshare.org. That's libertyhealthshare.org. The number is 855-58-LIBERTY, 855-58-LIBERTY, libertyhealthshare.org. All right, let's, uh, let's continue here. I was uh, screening our phone call on the, the landline uh, from Federal Prison, where Gary is on the line. Gary, you're on Free Talk Live uh, with Ian and Mark. Hi, Ian. Hi, Mark. How you doing? Hi, Gary. What's on your mind tonight? Well, I'm calling about a problem with the Constitution and Congress. Um, in a nutshell, the Constitution can be amended through various ways from Congress, and it can also be amended when the states have requested to do so. You need two-thirds or 34 of them. Well, my research has come out and found out that 49 states have requested for the Congress to hold the convention to amend the Constitution, really? and Congress is not doing anything about it. Is Congress obligated to do something about How that? How long has it been since they uh, asked to, the, you know, to have this convention held, these states? Okay, first of all, Congress is obligated because the Constitution says when two-thirds of the states make an application, Congress shall convene a convention. It's right there in Article 5. But if they don't do it, what happens? Nothing, right? Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. The only way to really affect change would be through a revolution because if obviously Congress doesn't want to obey the Constitution, I mean, who will? So but to uh, Mark's question, what's the time frame we're talking about here? The 49 states you're talking about, are we talking about over the last decade, last hundred years, or what? The first application was made back in 1789. That's the, when the, it was signed. <laughs> I understand that. Okay. But if you want to think about this for a second, the 27th Amendment to the Constitution, which uh, deals with the money with Congress people get paid, okay. was first proposed in 1789, and it took 203 years to ratify. There is no time limit on these applications. Yeah, that was what my no next question was going to be. Are these requests cumulative, meaning that you know a uh, few states did the request back in the 1700s, more in the 1800s, unless they withdraw the request? Is it just it just sits there and just sort of gathers together with other ones? Correct. That's the way the Constitution is supposed to work, at least the way not only I've interpreted, but other people have interpreted as well. Now, how do you – I'm just, just curious. How from federal prison do you do all this research, or did you do this before you went to prison? No, it actually made me going to prison, started to think about how can we change things to make it better. And then when I'm reading the Constitution, I'm all of a sudden like, hey, we only need 34 states. But then I started doing some research. I'm like, wait a minute. These states have already proposed it. So I started writing for the congressional records. And, of course, I can only get like 30, 40 at a time. And there's over 700 records that have these applications. I mean, states have made numerous applications over the years. Some states have made 30, 40 of them. So what, what do you do? You send a request to Congress and ask for these records, and then they have evidence of these requests in them? Yes, I send them to the clerk of the Congress, and I ask for the congressional records. And then it takes like three, four weeks. I get them, and I just keep ticking them off and then put another request in. So you've been poring yep. over this data. How long have you, have you been engaging in this research? Uh, about three, four years now. And you found 49 out of the 50 states have requested this constitutional convention. You've got all that uh, data. You actually sent us a copy of a lawsuit uh, that you're filing this about this. from a federal prison. Thank you, ma'am. I appreciate the reminder. Uh, anyway. <laughs> uh, yes, and actually, I filed that lawsuit last week. Okay. Now, are you familiar with the organization called uh, Convention of States? 
No, I'm not. Okay, so it's we, a, we don't get internet in prison. <laughs> yeah, conventionofstates.com, and they are trying to bring about a constitutional convention. Also, now here on the show, we could have sort of misunderstood a constitutional convention um, up until I began to speak to these people. And what it was, uh, apparently, a constitutional convention doesn't just rewrite the constitution; it proposes changes to a constitution that then three quarters of the states have to sign on to. Is that about right? That is absolutely correct. So you wouldn't have to worry about a runaway convention just proposing all kinds of willy-nilly things. The states would still have to ratify them. Yeah. So there wouldn't wouldn't be any changes that weren't ratified by three quarters of the states. And so if you can imagine some ultra conservative uh, thing wouldn't be ratified by, uh, you know, probably Hawaii or uh Connecticut, right? Or some ultra-liberal thing isn't going to be ratified by Utah or uh, Texas. So what you're going to get is largely populist things like maybe term limits, which I don't think are particularly helpful, but, you know, nonetheless, no one really, you know, nobody cares what I think. Um, you know, but you probably get things like term limits and maybe some kind of, uh, you know, thing that, you know, talks about immigration. That's really a big issue right now. Maybe some marijuana issues. There would be things... Uh, that would probably be addressed that would be very populist. And the Constitution... Like, balanced bud like a balanced budget. A balanced budget amendment would be pretty awesome. Hey, but Gary, well, not I, possible. I, you've got 21 pages here in this lawsuit. I honestly have not read it, um, but I've looked you know, briefly at it enough to know what it was about. What's the goal of the suit? Is it to force Congress to do their duty? No. All I'm asking the court to do is simply make a declaration that Congress is not doing and obeying their oath of office by failing to call a constitutional convention. And what will happen I, if that happens, if the judge says that? Won't they just ignore well, it? Well, they probably would, but, you know, once you get the judgment out there, now it's going to be a matter of public record, and then if it starts getting picked up, my, my next step really is to go to the states and say, hey, you need to put the pressure, or you guys, I've already got the declaration here, now it's up to you guys to help carry the water. I mean, I put the water in the pail, yeah. carry the water up the hill. One thing's for sure about being in prison is you get all kinds of time to uh, write to people and do research and things like that. Gary, keep us I in the loop. I didn't have any time in prison. Keep us in the loop as this uh, continues to develop. I thank you for the call tonight here, and I have no idea what that call is going to cost. I, uh, I've, uh, we've only taken collect calls locally here. The guys that have called from federal prison have been calling on prepaid cards, so uh -huh. I'm very interested to see how long a 10-minute conversation with a federal inmate will cost when it hits the phone bill. Here. They just they treat those guys terribly when it comes to costs on communicating well, with their families. They treat the families terrible, too, because yeah. they get just raked over the coals. 855 450 free. You can share your thoughts here on the live Sunday edition of Free Talk Live. We the people grow cotton, weave fabric, engrave ink, embed strips and fibers to protect from counterfeit and carding to a private bank, having it led back at interest, forcing taxes to service debt. This capitalism, or was Jefferson correct when stating a central bank issuing the public currency is a greater menace to the liberties of the people than a standing army? Ted Anderson, I'm placing a free silver dollar in a book that explains our monetary system. Call for your copy, 800-686-2237. It's time to understand the system. Call 800-686-2237. That's 800-686-2237. Healthy, organic, fresh fish, robust, mouth-watering vegetables, all from your home. It's called aquaponics. This brilliant, self-sustaining protein and veggie system is perfect for year-round growing. Know exactly where your food is coming from. Aquaponicsource.com is the one-stop shop for all your needs. Fish, fish food, plumbing, full systems, classes, and more. Learn to build your own system. Go to aquaponicsource.com for a free guide to aquaponics. That's aquaponicsource.com. Have you ever felt like the United States government knows way too much about your financial affairs? I continue to hear stories about property seizures, frozen bank accounts, confiscation of stocks and bonds. It makes me wonder if the U.S. citizen will ever again have the right to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Unfortunately, with the Drug and Money Laundering Act, the IRS Revenue Ruling 6045 of 1984, and the Trading with the Enemy Act and Franklin D. Roosevelt's Executive Order of 1933, some precious metal holdings are subject to government intervention. For this reason, Midas Resources has prepared a report explaining the boundaries of trading precious metals privately. Whether if you have any intention of trading with Midas Resources or not, I have instructed my representatives to give this report out free. 
Call for your free copy at 1-800-686-2237. When investing, always proceed with caution. Again, call 1-800-686-2237. Exercise your legal right to trade metals privately. 1-800-686-2237. Are you excited about the World Wide Web? Do you want a place where you can share your ideas and express yourself? Well, dial up your modems and stream on down to the GCN Live Community Forum. Lots of radical features await you there. Wow, Internet guy, I am so glad I went to the GCN Live Community Forum. You too can discover why the World Wide Web is awesome. Just go to GCNlive.com slash forum. That's GCNlive.com slash forum. I'll see you in cyberspace. Space. Friend at GCN Live on Diaspora and Cross.tv. Do you owe $10,000 or more to the IRS? Then get on board with the Tax Admiral and let us steer your way to financial freedom. The IRS is the largest collection agency in the world. They can freeze your bank accounts, seize your car, home, will garnish your paychecks and benefits. Don't take on the IRS alone. I can fight for you using industry secrets that can help stop the IRS. I'll cut your penalties, slash your interest, and reduce your overall tax bill. Sometimes I can even get it zeroed out completely. We're an A-rated company with over 30 years experience helping people clean up their mess with the IRS. And we have a 90 95% customer satisfaction rating. If you owe $10,000 or more to the IRS, are facing an audit, a lien, or levy, then call me right away. Call 800 287 7180. Again, that's 800 287 7180. 800 287 7180. 800 287 7180. Are your Google search results killing you? Unflattering content in blogs, news articles, online reviews, social media, or other sources can jeopardize your reputation, your business, and your livelihood. Let Reputation.com help. Our patented technology will make the truth about you more visible while pushing down unwanted negative content. Improve your Google search results. Call Reputation.com at 1-800-831-0771 for a free consultation. That's 800-831-0771. This is Free Talk Live. Call in toll-free, 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-FREE. This is Free Talk Live. You can join us toll-free. The number is 855-450-FREE, the live Sunday edition, 855-450-3733. Join us on Skype as well. Skype username is lrn.fm. And uh, let's see, still to come here tonight, Mark, you're going to share with us seven things you should never say to a homeschool mom. Uh, I don't know what those are, but I'm curious to find out. So There's get... probably a much larger list than that, but uh, this is the ones she wrote down. All right, so uh, we'll get into those when we get a chance. Also more about the crackdown on freedom of speech happening in Denver to jury nullification activists. They had their stuff stolen this week by police in clear violation of the spirit of an order from a judge to stop arresting jury nullification activists there. We'll continue with the with that discussion here as well. Uh, you can also bring up anything that happens to be on your mind. I want to invite you to Bitcoinist.net, the ultimate resource for Bitcoin industry news, reviews, education, and the latest in the cryptocurrency ecosystem. And you can go to Bitcoinist.net to experience their community forum, breaking Bitcoin and digital currency news, fintech and blockchain tech news, and Bitcoin uh, Bitcoinist's very sophisticated Bitcoin network statistics, a solid beginner's guide to Bitcoin, and more. The Bitcoinist platform serves the needs of everyone looking to keep up with Bitcoin and digital currencies from beginners to experts. So go and get started at Bitcoinist.net. That's Bitcoin, I-S-T, Bitcoinist.net. As we continue here, we'll go to your calls and thoughts. Hassan is in New York on Skype. Hello, Hassan. Hello. Hey, you're on the air. So I basically basically wanted to talk about an issue with the FCC. They're basically trying to push a new round of regulation through. And the filing is FCC filing 15-170. And basically what it relates to is the FCC implements a new regulations on any device that has a transceiver that can be software controlled. That means like if you can use software to change what frequency your device operates on or the transmit power, anything else like that. So would this affect, now we had a guy call in about this last night, specifically in reference to Wi-Fi routers. And what he was explaining would be that this would prevent 
uh, techno nerds like myself from installing custom uh, software on that Wi-Fi router. But from what you just said, it sounds like it could also affect other things as well. So, for instance, I have a two-way radio that I use here in Keene for activist purposes, and that is a programmable radio where I can go in there and I can modify the radio's programming to have different channels and things like that. So you're saying that would also be prohibited by this? It likely would, but the two main devices of concern are routers and smartphones because it will definitely... Re- cause a lockdown on those devices and that's where things get really bad because if you if you've noticed with smartphones smartphone companies for budget smartphones they only provide them with software updates for security issues for one year for high-end smartphones they only get security updates and, and things like that for about 18 months to two years and that means that if you're still using your device after that well if you're not using like a custom firmware like CyanogenMod or something else then your devices no longer get an update. And if but you've what noticed you're saying recently, is the custom it's... firmware stuff will be illegal to put on a phone? Um, under that new rule, it would likely be illegal because those devices do have access to the baseband for the transceiver that's in the phone. And the baseband is what? That's the like the set of programming that essentially allows the phone to operate on on the radio frequencies it operates on? Pretty much. Yeah. Okay. So So, what our caller called in about last night was there's a website, savewifi.org. Is that uh, what you're going to point people to? um, Mainly for me, it's better just to look up FCC file in 15-70 because that will allow you to comment directly on the ruling that they're trying to push through. I'm pretty sure savewifi.org actually links over to the FCC ruling and gives people instructions on how to comment. So I would recommend people go to savewifi.org. It seems like an easier, it's not a pretty website, but it is a page full of instructions on how to uh, to work on this. Now, why should people care? I mean, look, the average person listening, Hassan, is not a tech yeah, I haven't nerd. been moved from the point where, and I'm not saying that this is a bad idea, Hassan. I'm just saying, you know, emotionally, and this is how one sells. One doesn't sell to people's heads. One sells to people's hearts. And I haven't emotionally been moved to the point that after this show, you know what, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get home and I'm going to go look up FCC filing 15-70. Uh, For that, I'll have to delve into the issues of why it's technically unnecessary and also incredibly dangerous. I'd like to know about why it's incredibly uh, dangerous. I I wouldn't doubt for a second it's unnecessary. Like, it's incredibly dangerous because there are are a lot of security vulnerabilities. For example, if if you've heard in, like, tech news lately, um, there's been the net USB vulnerability for routers which is basically a function that allows you to share a USB device over your network. If your router has a USB port on it, it likely is running that net USB code. The problem with that is there's been a vulnerability where a remote attacker, at least on most routers, there are millions of routers that are vulnerable to this, can remotely exploit your router and run arbitrary code, which means they can run any program they want, they can spy on whatever you're doing, or use your router as part of their bot network. In order to like attack other people online. That sounds scary, yeah. And basically, there are many routers that will never receive an update to fix it. There, it's from all major manufacturers, and there are literally millions of routers that aren't getting updated because they no longer support them. But what does that have to and do? For many of them, it can what, be exploited. What does that have to do? The fact that existing routers can be exploited. What does that have to do with the FCC's proposal? Um, it would essentially make it illegal for those people who have vulnerable routers to actually replace the firmware on their router. Oh, I see what so you mean. Okay, it would be so, illegal for them to put in like DDWRT or yeah, so, tomato firmware, which so has what you, been what you're talking about there is there are there this there's this custom router firmware that people can download and upload into their router. Uh, you mentioned DDWRT. That's what it's called. I run it here at the LRN.FM studio. And it allows for more options for the people running the routers. In, in your case, what you're saying is it can fix problems with old router software that hasn't been patched. But are you saying this FCC ruling, if they make this, would actually prevent any updates from being given to a router, like even from the manufacturer, or only prevent um, uh, like people from putting their own custom stuff on? Only for putting custom stuff. The gotcha. manufacturers will still be able to, but because they only support their products for a very short time... It will be com- 
it wouldn't be very useful. For example, like their 802.11ac, which is the current modern Wi-Fi standard of router that are no longer receiving updates. Yeah, I see. I see so, where you're coming yeah, from. I mean, so the average person would be able to buy a new router and solve this problem, right? Instead of uh, keeping their old router in service for so long, they could just get a new one if they find that Man, the router's doing fine. Weren't you know? happening. I mean, why would I get rid of my router if my router is working? Well, I'm what he's pointing out is that there is a security vulnerability yes. in a lot of old routers that could result in people some aren't hacker thinking about those things coming in. Well, that that's right. Yeah, they replace their router when their router stops working. Yeah, that's uh, that's certainly true. I you know I share the concern, Hassan, but I I'm also sort of like Mark on this one. Even though I totally understand where you're coming from on this, I just can't you know I can't say at this point I'm yet motivated to go and do this. I just feel like you know that the techno geeks will still find a way around this. Maybe it'll be harder to you know to replace the software on these on these routers. Uh, but I, I feel like you know there's always going to be a solution to this stuff, and the FCC can only just get in the way and meddle and maybe make the process a little bit, a little bit more difficult. Am I wrong about that? There was a recent talk. There was a recent talk about that from the people who create the OpenWRT firmware, and basically they were talking about that it's likely that they will implement something called driver sign-in. I mean, like firmware, like there'll be like a special code that they have to use for the firmware. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, the router would, if it's would not signed it. by their the manufacturer's certificate, it wouldn't work. Mm -hmm. And that's something that you can't really crack. Like with modern encryption so yeah, far. Yeah, I see what you're saying. Basically, how it is is they no longer rely on secrets. They rely on a mathematical process where the way to reverse it is well known. Couldn't like, you with, buy a router from another country and get around this regulation? If it likely happened. could, but. If the router companies start designing their products for the U.S. market, which is the largest market, sure, then, then they'll do the same. They may implement that. Yeah, they'll do the routes. same design worldwide. I think there's definitely some concerns. I just don't know. You know, I, I guess I see where you're coming from. That you know, asking the FCC to not do this couldn't hurt. SaveWiFi.org, I believe, was the website. Thanks, Hassan, for the call tonight. I think that was made understandable, Mark. You didn't seem too flummoxed. I by feel it. like I've got it. Eight fifty five, four fifty free. SaveWiFi.org might be worth a trip. It's free talk live. This is a life-changing message for anyone with sleep apnea who is on the go and tired of dragging around a big, bulky home CPAP device. MiniCPAP.com now offers a portable device that's as small as a soda can and weighs less than a pound. For even more freedom, you can add a battery that's as tiny as a deck of cards. It's called the Transcend Mini CPAP. And right now, you can try it risk-free for 21 days by calling 1-800-939-8536. Transcend is the world's first portable mini CPAP device. It gives you the freedom to sleep in total comfort anywhere you are. Our smallest and most advanced portable design ever. Transcend is so small and so light you can fit it in your briefcase or purse to use anywhere you go. It's FAA compliant too, so you can even sleep comfortably while flying. Enjoy the freedom to sleep comfortably anywhere. Call MiniCPAP.com now for your 21-day in-home trial. 1-800-939-8536. That's 1-800-939-8536. My name's Clyde, age 59, and I reside in Florence, South Carolina. The doctors diagnosed me as having clogged arteries. Felt like I was carrying heavy concrete blocks around my feet and legs. I started taking heart and body extract as directed. It is less than three weeks, and I'm like a young man again. It's unbelievable that an herbal formula can work so fast and so powerfully. Learn the secrets of an effective, natural, 100% organic nutritional supplement for a healthy heart and circulation at hbextract.com. Uh, no way. Is that a real bullet necklace? No, it's a 9mm bullet necklace with matching earrings, you'll notice. Those are awesome. Where'd you get them? They found them at PatriotNecklace.com. Wow. They have a variety of calibers and necklaces and earrings and keychains. PatriotNecklace.com? PatriotNecklace.com. Your choice of caliber bullet includes a rugged American-made stainless steel dog tag chain. A percentage of every sale goes to military and service-related charities. And get a discount by entering GCN at checkout. Show your patriotism and support our troops with a bullet necklace from PatriotNecklace.com. Owe oh, $10,000 or more to the IRS? Get on board with the tax admiral. Don't pick on the IRS alone. I'll cut penalties and reduce your overall tax bill. Sometimes I can even get it zeroed out completely. We're an A-rated company helping people clean up their mess with the IRS. If you owe $10,000 or more, then call the tax admiral. Call 800-287-7180. Again, that's 800-287-7180. 800-287-7180.
Gold. It's like nothing else on Earth. From the Romans through the Renaissance, from the Industrial Age to the Space Age, gold has weathered the test of time. For 6,000 years, gold has remained the ultimate store of wealth. According to the World Gold Council and the U.S. Mint, demand is at an all-time high. The stage is being set for the re-emergence of gold as the common-sense alternative to a fiat paper currency that gets weaker every day. Midas Resources is proud to offer the hard-hitting report that arms you with the truth you need to protect you and your family from the Fed's plans for your hard-earned money. Don't gamble with your future. Call Midas Resources today and ask for your free copy of As Good As Gold. Call 1-800-686-223 for the report the Fed hopes you'll never see. As good as gold can be yours by calling 800-686-2237. If you have ever thought about owning gold, you must read this report. Call Midas today at 800-686-2237. Okay, open your mouth and say, ah. Uh. When your child has a sore throat, you need to know when to get help. The doctor recommended Say Ah Sore Throat Exam is your solution. The scientifically designed oral retractor offers a clear view of the throat, relaxing the tongue and minimizing gag reflex. Compare with a medical grade chart, website, and app. Then you'll know just what to tell your doctor. A wellness plan in your hands in minutes. Go to sayahhnow.com. Sayahnow.com, the new mainstay for every family's first aid kit. You're listening to Free Talk Live. Call in toll-free at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-FREE. It's Free Talk Live. You're welcome to join us here on the radio waves, live Sunday edition Toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Still to come, seven things you should never say to a homeschooling mom. And Mark will be sharing those things when we get to it. But first, more on the Denver crackdown. If you were tuned in at the beginning of the hour, you heard that despite a judge's order to Denver police to stop arresting jury nullification activists, they have gone ahead and this time not arrested them, but shook them down. They stole their stuff. They stole their tent. They stole their cooler. They stole their uh, flyers, a thousand flyers about jury nullification. They stole signs. They stole, stole chairs, buckets, a table, their shelter, a little uh, <laughs> 10 by 10 shelter they had set up there out in front of the Denver uh, courthouse. And the story is coming from Fija.org, the fully informed jury association. Now, the amended order does not prohibit tents, tables, and chairs. Many people have mistakenly been commenting that the presence of the shade canopy, table, and chairs are a violation of what remained in force of the amendment, amended plaza order issued by Judge Martinez after the injunction from Judge Martinez is applied. As co-plaintiff Eric Verlo has point out, pointed out, this is incorrect. The amended order uh, applies, to, applies such prohibitions only to an area marked with yellow shading on a certain picture in this order. Uh, all of the items stolen by police were located outside of this zone uh, where the plaza's orders prohibitions on such items remain in force. So on what basis did Denver police take these malicious actions? Well, the city uh, council for Denver and Denver's police chief cited Denver municipal code sections, whatever, as the reason for the raid. As Mr. Lane points out in the motion, all of these pertain to so-called encumbrances. And in the motion, it was explained that, quote, the police are engaged in retaliatory action for the exercise of protected speech. There is no statute in Denver defining the word encumbrance. Thus, the police have decided that anything and everything in the possession of the plaintiffs and their associates is an encumbrance and may be removed. They have taken this action to punish the plaintiffs and their associates for the exercise of free speech as defined by this court one day previously. Unquote. Moreover, citing dictionary definitions of an encumbrance as something that burdens, impedes, causes problems or difficulties, etc. Lane points out the small area in which juror rights educators were set up cannot reasonably con uh, be considered an encumbrance. I wouldn't think so. I looked at it, um, and best I can tell, it's off to the side. I would, in a however, huge plaza, by yeah, the way. It's it's not it's not in anybody's way. This is taking up maybe one percent. Of this plaza, you'd have for this to be an encumbrance, you'd have to be both blind and lost. 
um, right? Like it is out of the way. And, and that would presume presume the helpful jury nullification folks would not help take you and right. not you know hurt Blind, yourself. deaf, and lost. <laughs> then it would it could potentially be an um, encumbrance. But then again, so is the door. The courthouse. Right? Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, I mean, I've looked at this now. I, uh, you know, this this picture, and it's not an encumbrance. This, but this does look. I mean, this is a thumb in the face, right? Mm-hmm. Like I don't, I don't even know what that means. But the, you know, it's given the old middle finger. I know what that oh, yeah. means yeah. to the uh, the lawman there and uh, the judges at the courthouse. I think right? it's awesome. I mean, this is definitely the activist saying we are not being deterred. We're going to continue this jury nullification outreach despite the attacks by the right. police. So they ramped it up. They went from sort of handing out pamphlets to, you know what, we're going to have ourselves a little booth, a little mm-hmm. pamphlet booth, and we're going to hand out water to people so they want to come over or yeah, whatever. it's a great idea. It's, it's fine. Uh, all these things are fine to me. It's just that, you know, this is what happens uh, when one goes up against uh, the state, right? I mean, well, the, yeah, they're going to try to hurt you. They're going to try try to stop you. So this is, I guess, this is the natural order of things. Um, and I sincerely hope that they get the ruling from the federal court judge that says, "Oh yeah, when I was saying that this was reasonable, I meant a little beach party there at the side of the uh, the door is is reasonable." And I don't know if it is or not. We'll see what the judge says. Well, it's public property, and as far as I'm concerned, if they want to set up a tent and you know get some shade while they hand out stuff to people, they should be able to do that. If you want to set up a tent on public property, you generally are going to be run off, because that's not what public property is for. In the minds of the people that work for uh, the, the organizations that control public property, right? Well, we've set up tents here in Keene, New Hampshire for Free Keene Fest. I on only a said generally, years. and Free Keene Fest had its fair share of problems with the police. Mm, they never shut us down. They there tra- was one year where they threatened me and Toby, but they dropped the charges. Well, there you go. What do you want? Yeah, it wasn't really that much of a problem. But, I mean, I think, who cares about Key New Hampshire? This is Denver. Yeah. It's a city of a metro of like a million people, Ian. I'm just saying what you're saying backwater. doesn't apply across uh, across the board. No, what I said was... And Denver's more backwater than Keene because they're the ones who are attacking people from uh, for jury nullification. They've got a lot of people. That's what the definition of a backwater is. Uh-huh. A backwater is a little place. What you're saying is regressive, and that's yeah. different. Well, usually they're used interchangeably, aren't they? No. No? Backwater's not used. It's sort of like this dumb place where people don't really know what the hell they're doing, and uh, there's lots of corruption. No? Big cities always have a big state. It's entirely clear from the photo that no pathway into or out of the courthouse was encumbered. They're very far away from the doors. Nor was there any other problem created by the presence and peaceful activity of the jury rights educators or by their property. Now, the attorney argues in their brief that there is only one conclusion to be drawn from such brazen abuse of the law, and that is, quote, the Denver police, acting as jackbooted thugs in blatant violation of this court's order, came into the plaza and began seizing all property not being carried by a pamphleteer. The only plausible explanation for this is that the police were acting in retaliation for the exercise of the free speech rights of the pamphleteers, unquote. We have reports from locals who were present at the time of the property thefts by the government, Uh, That Denver PD has been ordered to return all of the property. As of Wednesday evening, however, it had not been returned. Mm. When one jury rights educator went to the police department to inquire what the reason was for the delay in returning the stolen property, he was told that the property owners must identify their property in order to retrieve it. I love this little trick. So now you have to jump through their hoops. They've come to where you were, stole your stuff. And now they're saying, well, you want your stuff back. you got to come to where we are, come back into our catacombs or whatever, and then, you know, hope we don't arrest you for some other crap while you're there. Uh, and then maybe you can identify your stuff and we'll give it back to you. Yeah. One of the difficulties is they're not very good about identifying who they took it from. That's true. So, it, you know, I mean, if you take property from somebody, you should probably return it to them. And that's I, I think I think that going there um, seems reasonable. That's where they got it taken. Going to the place from which, yeah. wait, you're having the police go to the scene of the crime where they took the stuff? I think the general, that's where they, you know, it's probably these bailiff sorts that work at this building that took it, right? No, it's Denver police. So now they have to go to the Denver police department. That's right. Yeah, it seems like they should return it to the place they took it. So share your thoughts with us here. Toll free number 855-450-FREE. Should somebody be able to set up a tent outside of the courthouse? Out of the way from traffic. These guys were uh, just looking at this photograph. 
I'd say a couple hundred feet at the minimum away from the front doors. It's hard to get a real gear uh, for how far they were. It's a kind of a far away photo that was taken yeah. to show the scope of the, the plaza. What I recall, it wasn't a couple, it didn't seem like a couple hundred feet, but it was definitely out of the way. Uh, I would say that it's definitely a couple hundred feet. But uh, anyway, that's just my interpretation. You're welcome to go to our Facebook page and Twitter, and you can check the article out and see the, the photo for yourself there. Yeah, it's it's difficult to tell the range. I um, mean, there's there's you can look at the front doors, and you can at the very least count how many front doors there are between the front doors and where they are, and there's quite a few. So they're way off to the side. They're not in anyone's not path in anyone's way. Uh, whatsoever. Should someone be able to do this? I say there's absolutely nothing wrong with setting up a booth on public property and giving out information. Well, I don't disagree with you, but um, you know what? The difficult there's you know the devil's in the details here. So the question is is can the organization known as the state do business at all? Because if you can set up if you're you know just free to set up uh, kiosks any old place, mm-hmm. then I should be able to set up a you know twenty by twenty thing right in front of the door. Uh, well, then you'd get charged with disorderly conduct for blocking traffic. Yeah, disorderly conduct's a pretty terrible charge. I think they should have a charge for specifically doing something That's like what that. disorderly conduct is. There's actually several different, uh, if you look at the disorderly conduct statute, there are several different applications for disorderly conduct. And one of the, generally disorderly conduct is considered a catch-all that they can just charge anybody with and usually get a conviction. Uh, but there are a couple of things disorderly conduct was really made for, and one of them is blocking traffic. So if you are, uh, you know, if you like, you walk down a street and block some cars from going somewhere, as some protesters have done, that's disorderly conduct. That is the definition of one of the, uh, you know, the provisions of disorderly conduct. There you go. I'm just saying that uh, public property doesn't mean that you can do whatever you want on it. Mm-hmm. That's true. But again, these guys were not in the way of anyone. So no, given I'm not that the, they are. given that the people, uh, given that the people who are wanting to set up a booth are not setting up in the physical, uh, you know, way of somebody trying to go into a door or whatever, then should they be able to do that? And I say yes. The toll free number is eight fifty five four fifty free. That's eight five five four five zero three seven three three. Coming up, uh, the seven things that you should never say. To a homeschooling mom, we'll start with, uh, is it number seven first, or should we start with number one first? I, it's just, it doesn't even have numbers. There's no order to the list. Okay, we'll get to those, and you can share your thoughts on the live Sunday edition of Free Talk Live. Are you searching for your soulmate? Someone you can trust, who will never betray you, or cooperate with the NSA? Stop searching. With EasyDNS, you found a keeper. EasyDNS does it all. Domain names, web hosting, and managed WordPress hosting. EasyDNS stands up for your internet freedom. And with servers in Canada, they do not cooperate with the NSA. Go to EasyDNS.com. You'll love their services or get a full refund. They guarantee it. And they accept Bitcoin. That's EasyDNS.com. Breathe it in, kid. Every three months, we install these air handler filters. They're more energy efficient, hold more dust, and are priced to save us more money. And granger has got close to 3,000 different styles and sizes to choose from, in stock and ready when we need them. I love oxygen, kid. And this facility's got some great AO2. I'm breathing easier just thinking about these air handler filters. Get some today. Get it? Got it? Good. Call, click Granger.com slash filters or stop by. Granger for the ones who get it done. Hi, my name is DeRay, suffering from migraines, having Botox injections in my head and neck to alleviate pain, costing $1,500 out of my pocket. I discovered Dr. Ortman and Gentle Touch Chiropractic Adjustment called Nuka. I'm migraine-free since my first adjustment. Thanks for giving me my life back, Dr. Ortman. I wish they prescribed you instead of Botox. Thanks, DeRay. Putting the bones back in place is only half of the solution. We design a nutritional supplement program the body can handle, actually absorb, providing nutrients, targeting the problem area. Between Nuka and Nutrition, we will have you on the road to a faster and more permanent recovery. Look us up on the web at drwartman.com or call 952-303-9124. Let us help you feel better faster. Wellspring Spinal Care at 952-303-9124. Again, that's 952-303-9124. Or on the web at Dr. O R T M A N dot Liberty Rules on Freedom Fiends with Michael Dean G C N.
With SRN News, I'm Gordon Griffin. The investigation continues into the murder of a Texas sheriff's deputy last week. A 30-year-old man is facing capital murder charges in the killing of a uniformed sheriff's deputy who was gunned down from behind while filling his patrol car with gas in what officials describe as a senseless and cowardly act. The arrest of Shannon J. Miles came less than 24 hours after authorities said he ambushed Darren Goforth, a 10-year veteran of the Harris County, Texas Sheriff's Department. Goforth is the 23rd officer to be shot and killed in the line of duty this year. That, according to Officer Down, a nonprofit group that tracks line of duty fatalities. Ron DeRockstra reporting. Two Virginia television journalists who were shot and killed by a former co-worker last week being remembered by community religious leaders. They gathered today at the Jefferson Center in Roanoke for an interfaith service for 24-year-old reporter Allison Parker and 27-year-old cameraman Adam Ward. Also, that's rnnews.com. Forecasters say Hurricane Ignacio has been downgraded to a Category 3 hurricane and is on a weakening trend as it moves to the northeast of Hawaii. Winds have dropped from 130 miles per hour to 115 miles per hour, and Ignacio is expected to become a tropical storm by Tuesday. Rescue teams are working to reopen roads to remote communities on the Caribbean island of Dominica, which was devastated by Tropical Storm Erica. At least 20 people have died. More than 50 are missing. Meteorologist Robert Moyeta at the National Weather Service Forecast Office in Miami says that heavy rains from the remnants of Tropical Storm Erica have prompted a flood watch that is extending over most of central and south Florida. The areas that are, that are normally uh, vulnerable to higher than normal astronomical tides, those areas, you know, which are, of course are near the coast, those areas actually missed out on the heaviest rain. So in some ways, you know, so that definitely was a good thing. This is SRN News. The following is not an actor, but a real-life story from Trinity Debt Management. I had numerous credit cards, and I was struggling with paying them off. If you're in debt and you need help, call Trinity at 1-800-758-5360 to talk to a certified counselor. I had heard about Trinity, so I made the call. They took care of all of my credit cards, and now I am completely debt-free. Trinity will consolidate your accounts into one easy-to-manage monthly payment, put a stop to late fees and over limit charges, reduce your interest and possibly improve your credit score. You'll save thousands. The people at Trinity are very friendly. They will do whatever you need them to do in order for you to feel better about being in a very difficult place. If your debt has you down, call Trinity at 1-800-758-5360. My name is Ann and I'm debt free for keeps. 1-800-758-5360. There will be GOP star power at next week's Capitol Hill rally to protest the Iran nuclear agreement. Presidential hopefuls Donald Trump and Ted Cruz are among the speakers invited to address the gathering scheduled for next Wednesday on the West Lawn of the U.S. Capitol. Hundreds of pro-Israel activists are also expected to descend on the Capitol that week. Critics of the deal are ratcheting up their pressure on Congress just a week before a scheduled up or down vote. The White House is lobbying for the votes to uphold an expected presidential veto of any resolution to disapprove. Capitol Hill correspondent Wally Hines. Three U.S. Forest Service firefighters who were killed battling wildfires in Washington State being honored today. Several thousand people gathered in Wenatchee about 90 miles south of where they died August 19th. The chief of the Forest Service says the three dedicated their lives to protecting forests and communities. And for that, everyone should be grateful. This is SRN News. Donald Trump's race for the White House is being run by an unconventional campaign operation. Trump has a presidential campaign staff of a couple dozen people. By contrast, Hillary Clinton employs more than 350 paid staffers. About a dozen Trump staffers work out of New York City, while the rest are mostly in the early voting states of New Hampshire, Iowa, and South Carolina. Unlike most campaigns, Trump has no pollster, fundraisers, or media consultant. And he's currently ahead in the polls. Greg Clugston, Washington. Japan is the 2015 Little League World Series champion. The team from Tokyo pounded out 22 hits and overcame an eight-run first-inning deficit to beat the team from Lewisbury, Pennsylvania, 18-11 to today in a nationally televised game from Williamsport, Pennsylvania. The Kitasuna team, also the winner in 2001 and 2012, gave Japan its 10th title. More details at srnnews.com. I'm Gordon Griffin. 
Are you excited about the World Wide Web? Do you want a place where you can share your ideas and express yourself? Well, dial up your modems and stream on down to the GCN Live Community Forum. Lots of radical features await you there. Wow, Internet guy. I am so glad I went to the GCN Live Community Forum. You too can discover why the World Wide Web is awesome. Just go to GCNlive.com slash forum. That's GCNlive.com slash forum. I'll see you in cyberspace. Space. Friend at GCN Live on Diaspora and Cross.tv. By now, you know the smart way to buy emergency food storage is calories per dollar. Ready Supply Foods sells you 50% more food for your money. GMO-free, 25-year shelf life, great tasting, and free shipping. You need 2,000 calories per day under ideal conditions. Most 30-day kits don't have enough calories to sustain you for more than a week. They just don't have enough nutrition to do the job. See the comparisons for yourself at ReadySupplyFoods.com. We are the new leader in value and quality. Go to ReadySupplyFoods.com today. This is Free Talk Live's Live Sunday edition. Of course, plenty of time for you if you want to join us here via the toll-free number at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Coming up, the seven things that you should never say to a homeschooling mom. We're going to jump right into that list. And then there's more terrible news for advocates of free speech. We already talked about the Denver courthouse where there's a crackdown going on on people who are trying to give out jury nullification information. Now there's another court decision that says, uh, this is a decision from the District Court of uh, District Columbia, federal court, saying that you can't protest in front of the Supreme Court anymore. And we can tell you more about that as well. Toll-free number, 855-450-FREE. Skype username is lrn.fm. Mark, you had the story from where? Oh, this is from uh, weirdunsocializedhomeschoolers.com. <laughs> <laughs> Which is kind of a joke, right? The idea being that there's a, homeschoolers are being made fun of by other students in the government school system for uh, and parents as well yeah. for you know being weird and you know un, you know the idea is if you're homeschooling you keep them locked in the house the whole time and they never get to meet any other kids and never get any socialization. But that's not actually the case. Uh, a lot of homeschoolers meet other homeschoolers. They go on field trips. They get together. They play outside of class time or whatever you want to call it. Well, I would say that your kids at the government school are antisocial, and like we could look at the definition mm. of what antisocial is, and I reasonably can guess that since the government school is an institution, and your kids have been sent to it long enough to become institutionalized, that they could be definitely considered to be antisocial. However, I would concur that homeschoolers who are, uh, you know, social uh, many times, um, all the homeschoolers I know are getting out and getting around and meeting people and, you know, conducting themselves in uh, reasonably uh, social ways and they're, uh, you know, doing, parents are doing their best not to see kids excluded. You don't have the mean girl thing going on. You don't mm-hmm. have the, uh, you know, the kids getting uh, picked on and, and that sort of thing. Well, if somebody's being mean, then obviously you can just disassociate with them, whereas in a homeschool group, uh, if their parents won't talk to their kid or whatever, you can just not go hang out with those people anymore. But you can't not send your kid to the government school if that's what you've decided to do because they'll come after you criminally if you don't send your kids to the government school. And so, therefore, uh, if you feel like you can't afford to send do your kids or send your kids anywhere but the government school, then you feel like you're forced into this corner where your children can be threatened and bullied and attacked uh, any old time. Yeah, I don't. Um... Any parent can go ahead and decide that they don't, you know, most parents can figure it out, figure out some way or another. If it's a two-parent household, at the very least, you can figure something out um, to, you know, handle getting your kid out of government school if that's what you want to do. Some people really are backed in the corner, but the likelihood of a truant officer coming to visit, I mean, I haven't seen too many cases of that um, recently. I think what the biggest problem with government school is that you're forced to pay for it. My son, who's been homeschooled his whole life, has never been to government school, has never ridden on a school bus has never been you know dealt with these things Mm. that kids are dealing with is stolen from twice a year the money that you know money that i would spend on his could potentially spend on his education or other things to having to do with the family is taken and given to to the public school to send other people's kids to school that's true to an institution that i feel is uh, you know fundamentally 
wrong and antisocial. Well, if he now, ever was on a school bus, he might get stolen from directly there. Man, some of the worst things I've ever seen happen at schools were actually on the school bus. Well, um, a school bus is a pretty rough place yeah. uh, in my experience, too. But I would say that your kid being social and being properly socialized is weird. That is a full-on weird thing to have happen because the rest of America is sent through this institutionalized day prison mm. that they've, they're have they sent to on a regular basis. So, yes, uh, homeschoolers are weird because the rest of the kids out there are uh, – they're sent through a really, really broken system that parents have almost no say over. Yeah. And the reason they continue doing is because they're forced to pay for it. it and they're they're told that uh, that that one that both parents have to work. Now my wife works, obviously, but she's, you know, works in the home. <laughs> she's busy, but uh, she doesn't have a job. And that, you know, she's she's busy all the time. And and I I think a lot of par- parents don't think they can do that. Because they've been told over and over that this is what they ha- have to do. But honestly, if you're not making that much money, then the money you're spending on the car and the gas and the clothes and all the other things that you've got to do and, and lunches. Let's not forget how incredibly expensive it is to eat out. So if you're not packing um, packing a, a lunch to go to work, which a lot of people don't, you know, it, this is it's expensive to, to, to go out and work. Working is expensive. And in many cases, families can save money just by having mom at home. Mm-hmm. Um, if it's mom, you know, it could be dad. It doesn't matter to me. Your Mr. lifestyle mom. is yours. What's that? Mr. Mom. Yeah, sure. Yeah. And a lot of times they can you can get the newspaper, cut out coupons, and save money simply by staying at home. All right. So number seven on, or I guess they're not numbered. Yeah, the first item on this list of things you're not read supposed her, to say. Her intro. Um, you know those times when you wonder if uh, there's something you're thinking of saying that's going to come across possibly as rude, offensive, or just upsetting? I'm here to give you an inside glimpse into the mind of a homeschool mom. There are at least seven things you should never say to a homeschool mom, unless you're trying to see if you can make her head explode, which I suppose could be amusing. Um. What about socialization? So this is the first thing. I think we just addressed yeah, that. Yeah, uh, homeschoolers hear it all the time, um, This the socialization thing. Mm. As though, um, you know, your kid staying at home, not learning how to knife fight and cuss in, in public school yeah. um, is somehow, uh, you know, antisocial. Well, I would suggest that the training that your kid is getting in public school, which to me seems like largely busy work and, um, you know, uh, essentially a, a welfare government welfare babysitting program for uh, parents, um, that that is what antisocial, the, the definition of antisocial behavior. So really, she goes on, really, we all probably heard this, uh, this one enough in our first uh, year or month of homeschooling to last us a lifetime. We've talked about homeschooling socialization ad nauseum. The truth is, we really have to work hard to make sure that our kids maintain the stereotypical status quo of being weird and unsocialized homeschoolers. So she's saying that uh, you have to work very hard to keep your kid from being socialized. Not one single homeschooling mom is going to look at a person asking this question and as a sudden dawning of understanding crosses her face says, my goodness, what about socialization? Why did I ever, did I never think of that? Quick, let me rush my little darlings right into the nearest school and get them (laughs) enrolled. Seriously, it's not going to happen. Our kids have friends, really. Would you like some bean dip? I don't know what that means. Um, but, you know, she does advocate for sweet tea earlier. So maybe it's uh, some you know, Southern thing she's You know, good, every good homeschool kid I've ever encountered, and I wasn't. I went to a government school. But uh, every homeschool student that I've ever encountered has been just excessively courteous and nice and kind. I would say that, if anything, they're, they are more well socialized than people that uh, – than the kids that come from the government schools. Uh, just to a T. Every single one of them. Has been like that. I think that they spend um, sort of more time around adults, and mm. people may consider that to be a lack of socialization because they've come to the conclusion that seven-year-olds should be housed with seven-year-olds, eight-year-olds housed with eight-year-olds, and nine-year-olds housed with nine-year-olds because that's the way the school system set up. But where in life does this occur? Lord but, of the Flies. But, well, okay. Lord of the Flies is a fictional book. Well, right, but it's it was uh, that's an example of uh, these a bunch of kids being thrown together of the same age range and absolutely terrible things happening, right? I know I understand it's fiction, but you know there's no adults around to set a good example for them. I've been at workplaces where you tend to have um, certain people of uh, certain demographic groups. You don't have as many older people. I mean, you know, there's been like young workplaces and that kind of thing, mm-hmm. but you're still talking about people from an age range of. 
18 on up to 40s, you're not talking about some, you know, these 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 cells of demographic groups. Um, yeah, I'll give you that. It, it, there might be some efficiency if you're going to have big classrooms to keeping kids of the same age together. But that's really the issue is, is that you lose things like kids teaching each other and learning because they're teaching and a variety of other things. Mm -hmm. um, uh, this concern about socialization is, I'll give you, like it might be the first thing you think about. It's certainly different than what you've, uh, you've experienced, but it's been addressed in the homeschooling spheres. And don't worry. We got it handled. Well, I mean, I think that that's still a le legitimate question, right? Like, eh, it's easy to come at it from the perspective of, oh, well, we've got this handled. We're the homeschooling. We know what we're doing. Um, but a lot of people don't know much about homeschooling. They have in their mind this picture of, uh, like, you know, like some sort of ultra-right Christian family that doesn't want to connect their kids with the outside world, and that's why they're homeschooling. And those people do exist, I think, but I suspect they are a minority uh, of the homeschoolers. Are you concerned about socialization for homeschool kids? Give us a call at 855-450-3733. It's 855-450-FREE. Attention business owners. Do you know the three most critical letters in business? CEO? MBA? Nope. Here's a hint. These three little letters can make the difference between making a fortune and losing everything. ROI? The answer is INC, as in incorporation. Because if you're not incorporated and someone sues your business, you can lose it all. Your home, your car, even your life savings. That's why Incorporate.com is now giving away a free incorporation guide to all business owners. So you can incorporate in just 10 minutes. Protect your home. Protect your car. Protect your life savings. Call 1-800-941-1029 for your free 10-minute incorporation guide from Incorporate.com. They don't provide legal or financial advice. They just make incorporating or forming an LLC quick and easy. Get the three little letters that can mean the difference between making a fortune and losing everything. For your free guide, call 1-800-941-1029. That's 1-800-941-1029. On the average, Americans work between 45 to 50 years hoping to build up enough wealth to retire and live out their golden years. Unfortunately, with taxation, the rising cost of food, energy, housing, and medical, many retirees are forced to live below the poverty line. Is this a flaw free enterprise, or is our monetary unit we call the Federal Reserve Note forcing us into perpetual debt, ensuring inflation and higher taxes? These questions and more can be answered by reading G. Edward Griffin's book, The Creature from Jekyll Island. Congressman Ron Paul states it's what every American needs to know about central bank power, a gripping adventure into the secret world of international banking cartel. Hi, this is Ted Anderson. I will give a silver dollar from the early 1900s to anyone who purchases this book. Call one 800 68 and order a copy today. It's critical that the public be made aware of the system. Call and order your copy today at 1-800-686-2237. That's 1-800-686-2237. Hi, this is Ted Anderson. Have you ever wondered why banks, stockbrokers, investment advisors won't talk about gold IRAs? They've been available since 1986, yet the financial industry won't recognize the value of gold for your retirement. Gold has outperformed paper investments, yet no word about IRAs. If you would like to have gold for your retirement, call 800-686-2237. Don't get left behind by rising inflation and low returns. Call 800-686-2237. Secure your future and call 1-800-686-2237. Honey, why are there fish swimming in our bathtub? Aren't they cute? You need more omega-3s, and those fish oil pills with toxins and heavy metals are scary. So I'm making fish oil from scratch. Oh boy, didn't I tell you I'm ordering Nutrigold fish oil? It's exceptionally pure. That's what they all say. No, really. Nutrigold's fish oil is concentrated from pure cold water fish straight off the Alaskan coast and manufactured right here in the USA. Well, cold Alaskan waters are much more pristine than the polluted waters that other fish oils are sourced from. That's what I'm saying. And it's five-star certified to meet international purity, potency, and freshness standards. Well, that sounds even better. Great. I'll be in my office ordering a few bottles. If I order now on www.fishoil.best, I can save $5 using the promo code MYFISHOIL. Um, Honey, why are there bees in my office? Get rid of those fish burps for good. Go to Nutrigold's U.S. made fish oil products by going to www.fishoil.best and get $5 off by entering MyFishOil at checkout.
Are your Google search results killing you? Unflattering content in blogs, news articles, online reviews, social media, or other sources can jeopardize your reputation, your business, and your livelihood. Let Reputation.com help. Our patented technology will make the truth about you more visible while pushing down unwanted negative content. Improve your Google search results. Call Reputation.com at 1-800-831-0771 for a free consultation. That's 800-831-0771. Now, more Free Talk Live. Call in toll-free at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-FREE. Free Talk Live. You may join us here toll-free, 855-450-FREE. This is the live Sunday edition of the show. With you in the studio, Ian here. And King Mark. We are sharing with you the seven things you should never say to a homeschool mom. And Mark is going to continue on that list here in a moment. I also want to let you know whether you homeschool or not, you probably buy things online. You might have bought things at Amazon. A whole lot of people have. I know I'm a big fan of the service and the selection from Amazon. I've used them for a long time. But I am no longer buying things directly through Amazon. I am using Purse. Go to saveatpurse.com if you want to do this, too. You can save 20 25%, sometimes even more than that, on pretty much anything you want to buy at Amazon. There are a few exceptions, but if it's on the free Super Saver shipping or Prime list, you can probably get it for a huge discount through saveatpurse.com. Now, there's a catch, and the catch is you have to have Bitcoin. That's it. You have to have Bitcoin to get 20% or more off or less. You can actually select the percentage you want off. The, the higher the percentage, the longer the time it will take for your order to be fulfilled. But sometimes they're, ordered, they're, uh, they're fulfilled faster than you expect. In fact, some, they'll say it might take a, a day or two and you might have it ordered within two hours. So go and check it out. Get started at saveatpurse.com. Save big on pretty much whatever you need to live in uh, to live your life through Amazon through saveatpurse.com. What's the average that you um, you know ask for as far as a percentage? My personal average, I would say, is twenty five percent. And how but long do you expect US to wait? The U.S. average is twenty percent. And how long do you expect to wait for your twenty five percent? It usually doesn't take more than an afternoon. Hmm. Okay. But it could take longer than that. You never know. And um, you generally do one item at a time, not a list of items? I've done all of that. Okay. Yeah. So uh, save at purse.com. All right. So our toll-free number here tonight, 855-450-FREE. Let's continue on this list, Mark. The first one on the list of things you're not supposed to say to a homeschooling mom is, what about socialization? Well, it turns out homeschoolers do a lot of socializing. They do everything from field trips to uh, parties and get-togethers of a variety of sorts. What do you do all day? The only person who could probably get away with asking this question is a fellow, home, a fellow homeschooling mom or mom considering homeschooling who's genuinely trying to figure out how to schedule a homeschool day. If asked by anyone else, even with a hint of, you must sit on the couch and watch reality TV and eat bonbons all day. I don't even know exactly what a bonbon is. I've had one. Okay. It's Was a it? chocolate treat. Okay. Frozen Excellent. chocolate treat. There you go. All day, it's uh, probably not going to go over well. Just warning you. Um, and this is, I, I think this is obvious, right? I mean, <laughs> if you're homeschooling or even if you're doing what they call unschooling, you've designed your life around your kids learning. There probably are somewhere in America, somebody who, uh, some, some families who j choose to simply keep their kids as ignorant as possible, or perhaps, uh, teach them things that are of no use in the world. But when you think about kids being taught things of, no, of little use in the world, consider high school. I can't remember, I can't think of much of anything I learned in high school that I find useful um, in my day-to-day -day life. But um, nonetheless, there probably are parents that attempt, intentionally keep their kids ignorant. I don't know who they are, uh, but I can say that, uh, sure, that anything's possible statistically. The vast majority of homeschoolers and unschoolers, however, um, homeschoolers, some of them have these rigorous uh, curriculums, and they're on this path to getting their kids. I've met them um, where their kids went to college at 11 and 13. Now, I don't see the particular value in that. I'm not looking to get my kid um, into you know their 
having them finish their graduate degree by the time they're 18. Well, I don't see the value in going to college in general, but if you're going to go to college, it makes sense to go sooner rather than later. Yeah, I'm not saying you should be held back either. I'm just saying that it can be, um, you know, there's there's value in sort of entering college at about the same time other people do. You know, do you want to be that weird kid that, uh, you, how do you think a 13-year-old is dealing with uh, their first year in college? I don't care. I mean, I would think that that'd be a good thing from all okay. aspects. I mean, yeah, I could see see that it would be weird in that you know you certainly wouldn't be going out to the bar with the the college buddies or whatever yeah. but of course neither are the college freshmen or sophomores they're not old enough to go to the bar they're doing uh, the, uh doing other stuff that involves uh, drinking drinking no yeah. doubt and a 13 year old is likely going home at the end of the night instead of going back to the dorm rooms or something yeah. like that they're probably living in the same town or, or whatever um, so, yeah, no doubt from a social aspect, it's going to be a little bit awkward, but that doesn't mean that that person can't still make connections or whatever, or that, you know, they'll likely be quite respected by a lot of the students in the school. Like, wow, that kid's pretty smart, right? Yeah, I I guess my son is uh, ahead of the curve when it comes to reading. I'm not trying to, uh, is, uh, you know, there's a lot of things to read in this world. Let's read. We don't need to rush off to uh, to college just because he's uh, a good reader or something like that. So I, mm-hmm. may, maybe it's just not something that I'm I'm experiencing. Yeah. Um. Uh, but personally, uh, you know, uh, I, I would, would say, say get stay the hell out of college and start applying your your learnings in the real world, and you'll learn a whole lot more that way and uh, get a lot more life experience. And to me, that's that's more valuable. I wish I could take my time in college back. At this point, but still, to have been to have been able to finish college by age seventeen would put somebody way ahead, I think, of the average seventeen year old. Yeah, I wish I had gold coins that I had vet- invested the money that I spent in college on. You know, what I mean, sure. If I would have bought gold coins instead of going to, uh, you know, spending the money on college, yeah, I think I'd be better off right now because uh, the whatever you know, whatever courses I took in college aren't benefiting me today. Um, but nonetheless, uh, people who homeschool and unschool, they're very busy with their kids, um, and they're l- working on a variety of lessons. Now, I don't know how every – unschooling is this kind of uh, – this category uh, that of uh, people who are attempting to not replic- replicate class in any way, and each of them does it differently. So if you call what we do uh, unschooling – I don't. Um, we call it family-directed learning – but if, if you call it that, my wife and I are constantly looking for ways to teach my son different things. So when he asks questions, we go find the answers. Mm-hmm. We don't try to pass off those. Uh, those, op- those are huge opportunities. Every time a child asks questions, and at age seven, they ask a lot of them, you attempt to get to a, a computer screen as quickly as possible, and let's answer these questions. And that way you teach them research. Research, far more valuable than, um, you know, getting the answer right. The ability to get the next answer right on Mm -hmm. your own, that's valuable. Yeah, I always hated testing at schools because I remember I was in a programming class and I was pretty decent at doing the programming. I was getting A's on the actual work. But when the test came along, there was like this AP test or something like Uh that. It was the only AP class I ever took. Uh, I failed the AP. Mm. Just because I just wasn't good at taking the test, but I was doing great doing the actual programming. Because when you're programming, you can go and look up what you need to learn. You know, if you don't know how to write a function of some sort, there's books. And, uh, you know, at this time it was the mid-90s, so there weren't as many online uh, learning options available. But there were ways to find the answers that you were looking for in in the moment. Of course, in testing, you can't do that. Sometimes it's just not realistic. The worst tests are the tests that are sort of pivotal. Right. Like the ones that one test makes a difference in sort of how your life goes. And uh, I had one of those one time where I did poorly. Uh, Basically, I didn't pay attention to the directions. Uh, I'd always been a great test taker. And I still think about that. Now, hmm. uh, you know, I mean, it's just one of those things and, you know, you, you move on or whatever. But tests, are they, I mean, how many times, does life have a lot of tests? School has a lot of tests, but if you remove school from it, no. life doesn't have a lot of tests. No, I can't remember the last test I took. And, and if it is school. a test, it doesn't look like the tests you took in school. It was something entirely different. Probably the closest thing would be like a job application or something. Sometimes they give you a questionnaire of like, what would you do in this circumstance? Oh, yeah. Would you steal the money? There's those. Free Talk Live. So I say to Mark at lunch, look, you know, I keep hearing from the government that, you know, they're worried someday ISIS may get here. 
And I go, duh, a Garland, Texas, Muhammad cartoon shooting. ISIS is already here. I'm not waiting for these people to defend me. If they don't know ISIS is here already, they got no clue. I'm taking care of myself. Guns80.com, AR-15 kits, 30-shot magazines, great prices. They've even got the Hillary special. Guns80.com, that's 844-2-GUNS-80, Guns80.com. The human body is more than 60% water. Your brain and muscles are 75% water and your blood is 92% water. Water is vital to your body, and alkalizing your water is the key to keep it running at its best. AlkaVision Plasma pH drops keep your entire body healthy, boosts energy, promotes weight loss, and even fights cancer. Call 800-518-7615 or go to AlkaVision.com to find out more. That's A-L-K-A-Vision.com. Gold, it's like nothing else on Earth. From the Romans through the Renaissance, from the Industrial Age to the Space Age, gold has weathered the test of time. For 6,000 years, gold has remained the ultimate store of wealth. According to the World Gold Council and the U.S. Mint, demand is at an all-time high. The stage is being set for the reemergence of gold as the common-sense alternative to a fiat paper currency that gets weaker every day. Midas Resources is proud to offer the hard-hitting report that arms you with the truth you need to protect you and your family from the Fed's plans for your hard-earned money. Don't gamble with your future. Call Midas Resources today and ask for your free copy of As Good As Gold. Call 1-800-686-223. For the report the Fed hopes you'll never see. As good as gold can be yours by calling 800 686 2237. If you have ever thought about owning gold, you must read this report. Call Midas today at 800 686 2237. We, we, we are a survival company. We manufacture our own line of Level 3 and Level 3A body armor. We proudly make our armor 100% in America. We have the best prices in the nation, about $125 cheaper than our nearest competitor. All lab certified, for thou art my rock and my fortress, Psalm 31.3. We are Fortress Survival, LLC. Dot, dot, dot com. Sciatica, lower back pain, hip pain, poor posture. If you suffer from any of these problems, get ready to relax. Introducing an amazing product that's been in the market for over 25 years, the Sacro Wedgie. It was invented by a football coach using a common sense osteopath technique. He created this device to help his athletes by isolating and supporting the sacrum, which is the keystone of our anatomy. This wedge-shaped bone is in the center of our hips, where a lot of pain starts. Simply relax 20 minutes daily on the amazingly simple Sacro Wedgie and let gravity do the work, helping muscles rebalance and start releasing nerves. Sit in the sacro wedgie at the computer or while traveling to help correct posture to finally help relieve those stubborn aches and pains for only $33.95. It's made in the USA, so click the family-owned website at sacrowedgie.com, spelled S-A-C-R-O-W-E-D-G-Y.com, or call 1-800-737-9295. That's 1-800-737-9295. Relax your back pain away with the sacro wedgie. Okay, open your mouth and say, ah. Ah. When your child has a sore throat, you need to know when to get help. The doctor recommended Say Ah Sore Throat Exam is your solution. The scientifically designed oral retractor offers a clear view of the throat, relaxing the tongue and minimizing gag reflex. Compare with a medical grade chart, website, and app. Then you'll know just what to tell your doctor. A wellness plan in your hands in minutes. Go to sayahnow.com. Sayahnow.com, the new mainstay for every family's first aid kit. This is Free Talk Live. Call in toll-free, 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-FREE. Hey, it's Free Talk Live. We're doing the live Sunday edition of the program, talking homeschooling which I don't really have any experience with, but Mark does because that's what they do with uh, Jack, their seven-year-old, seven? Yep, he's seven. seven. Seven-year-old son. Uh, He has never set foot inside a government school classroom or school bus. And Mark, you're sharing with us the seven things not to say to a homeschool mom. And we'll we'll continue with that list here. 
But I want to let you know about ExpressCoin. It's the best choice for getting cryptocurrencies, including Bitcoin, Litecoin, and Dogecoin. It's fast, safe, easy, and inexpensive. And at ExpressCoin, they are a licensed money services business. that You can get your cryptocurrencies with money order or check. Just get started at ExpressCoin.com. Whether you're in the U.S. or Canada, most everybody in those places can use ExpressCoin.com. You can do it from your smartphone. Just download their app through ExpressCoin.com. And when you're ready to check out, use coupon code FTL. That's FTL like Free Talk Live to get up to $40 worth of cryptocurrency with no fee at all, which is an awesome deal. So get started at ExpressCoin.com. Coupon code FTL. Uh, so let's continue here, Mark. The two questions so far that you're not supposed to ask a homeschooling mom is what about socializing and uh, let's what do you do all day? Yeah, what do you do all day? <laughs> number three, um, there's no numbers on these. It's just uh, you know t topics and paragraphs. Although I think this is obviously tongue in cheek. People should ask homeschooling parents questions, uh, even the most basic questions, because they don't know. And that's the only way you can learn is by asking yep. questions. Just think, if you didn't homeschool, You'd have more time to clean the house. Uh, yeah, because everybody wants more time to clean the house. And really, that comment just implies that my house is messy, which it probably is. But you know what? A, a pristine, she misuses the term here, um, not so great, not, not representation representative of the homeschooling community. Pristine doesn't mean clean. Or, oh, really? Right. Uh, you know, uh, immaculate would be a better term for the way one keep would keep a house. Pristine means untouched by humans. Oh. So you, you'll see a pristine forest, and people think that that means a beautiful mm. forest. And it does mean a beautiful forest, but it means a forest untouched by humans. Primitive. Yeah, I gotcha. Yeah. Pristine house is, in a, uh, is a little low on my list of priorities right now. There'll be plenty of time for cleaning once my kids are grown and gone. The fact is, right now, I don't try to do it at all because I can't. Um, do it all because I can't. Um, I guess you must do it at some point, right? Mm -hmm. So I, I focus on what's important. Besides art lessons, there would be much more, uh, they'd be much more complicated if we were using a medium other than dusty furniture in our fingers. <laughs> um, I, obviously, she's uh, she's kidding here t to some extent, but... This is one of those conundrums in life. Now, it used to be back in the 50s, women, st women stayed home. Kids were kicked out of the house until 5 o'clock or until dinner time. And that's what women did all day long. They cleaned. And they had cleaner houses back then. But I kind of feel like this is my, my take on clean houses. Yes, I'd like to have my house to be as clean as possible. I'm not willing to do that work. And apparently neither is my wife. So there you go. Your um, house doesn't seem filthy. It's not filthy, but uh, wouldn't wouldn't it be awesome to you have a house? You don't clean, things get filthy. What's that? If you don't clean, things yes, get you filthy. You clean, but you don't clean like every single day or every single Yeah, that single seems minute. unnecessary. Indeed it does. If you're going to have animals or children, mm -hmm. your house is going to be messy to some extent. It's not going right. to be as clean as it would be if you didn't have these creatures. You get a choice in life to some extent between love of other beings or a really clean house. <laughs> I'm not trying to be a jerk here. This is the way I look at it when I go into other people's houses who have animals and kids and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. I don't judge people's houses that harshly. Do mm. you? No. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I mean, if it's a hoarder nest, I'm not going to want to come back. I, I think that <laughs> I think people judge their own houses far more harshly than yeah. than they tend to judge other people's houses. I've if it's it, gross, I'm not coming back. Have I you mean, been that, in that way a lot? Not a lot. But yeah. I've encountered somebody's, I'm not going to name names, but I've encountered a place that I decided that I do not want to come back to this place. Yeah, well, I'm, I don't know where you're talking about. But, I'm not um, going to tell you. Nonetheless, um, I have experienced one hoarder in my life. Mm -hmm. And the rest of people's houses are pretty ordinary houses. And, you know, no big deal. Usually yep. hoarders, they try to keep you out of their house That's anyway. That's true. They're embarrassed. So and they, they at the very least know that they have a, enough of a problem that they're not letting, you know, generally letting people right. into the house. So if you're... Letting people in your house, the chances are good your house is just normal and not that big of a deal. I don't know why people get all hung up on clean houses. Well, I still feel it necessary to apologize to someone who visits my home if it is in a mess, uh, a condition that I consider to be messy. Yeah. Because I find that, you know, just not because I judge other people's homes, but because I'm a little embarrassed. How do that. you feel when you are apologized to when somebody comes? I'm usually like it's fine, no big deal. Right. I mean, you're like it, I, I'm not passing that judgment. Please no. don't put on me that judgment passing. That's kind of how I feel about it. Mm -hmm. um, it's normal for people to apologize, but at the same time, I'm like, hey, whoa, whoa, whoa! What makes you think that I'm the person back here judging your house? 
<laughs> right. <laughs> and there's no good way to say, hey, keep your self-recriminations to yourself. I don't know how to say that necessarily to somebody in a way that kind of puts them at ease, but it would be really awesome if I had you know, managed to work together the tone and the words that made that happen. Because, you know, there haven't been too many times I've gone in, uh, into a house in my life where I'm dealing with a situation where I'm like, oh my God, this is awful. Or even mm-hmm. I'm, you know, thinking those things to myself at all. I don't know. Yeah, nor have I. Uh, but I, at the same time, I think the reason I would say something like that is because I want the person who's visiting, who may not have ever visited, to know that I'm aware of the state of the house and that, to me, it's unacceptable and that I am sorry for that. That, you know, it should be in better shape to, to bring a guest to and I apologize I didn't have time or I didn't make the time to do the level of cleaning that I thought would be appropriate to bring a guest over to. Because I understand where people are coming from. I've said things like, you know, in my mind and in my heart, my house is generally um, is, is cleaner than this. But in reality, this is about the state it is generally. And that's about the state that it is generally. Okay. And it's okay. Um, you know, sometimes you'll you look along the side of the wall, there'll be some dog hair down there that probably should have been swept up. Or my son's toys are out in the middle of the living room because, well, you know, we live in our living room as opposed to keeping it in some kind of uh, um, immaculate state uh, where, you know, it's just there for guests. Do why you must have so much patience is uh, what some people say to uh, homeschool Oh, is this moms. number three? Where are we on? Number three? There's no numbers. There's it's about paragraphs. Four. Yeah, there's paragraphs. Okay. You want to go back and count them? I'm just I'm wondering call what it we're four. on. I'm losing, losing track. Number uh, four? Okay. Uh, we'll, we'll call it number four. Okay, yeah. great. And, and if I have to add a number in between, I'll just make something good. up, all right? I feel good about that. Okay. So the hysterical laughter that ensues after such a comment could cause a homeschool mom to uh, wet herself. And honestly, after a certain age, it really is just embarrassing. We don't, really. Most of us, um, anyway, don't have uh, that much patience. Self-control, clearly. Patience, not so much. I can't tell you how many times I've assured friends who don't homeschool that getting through homework and trying to figure out uh, how kids do math these days or hearing, uh, uh, you know, 100,000 times, that's not how Mrs. So-and-so does it, requires so much uh, more patience than homeschooling. Hmm. So I, I would agree um, that... I would agree that we don't have, at my house, particularly a great deal of patience um, when it comes to homeschooling. I would say that we have chosen a lifestyle where we're going to spend time with our kid. Like, this wasn't a situation where, I, I don't have my son because we didn't we weren't sure, we didn't put a condom on one day, right? Mm-hmm. Um, we have our son because we wanted to have one and we want to uh, spend the time with him that we possibly can. He's young, that goes very quickly, and I can imagine how, yeah, how it must be. almost halfway done. Yeah. How much? Right. It's almost it, this is oh, at, at 14. He's going to be a real handful, yeah. I'm sure. Um, but I can imagine what it's like. Sometimes I feel for fathers. I'm so lucky having the job that I, I am. Um, you know, what's it like? My dad left at something like 530 or six o'clock in the morning to go to work. He was gone and he didn't return to the house. At the earliest he would ret- return would be like 4.30 or 5. In many days, he'd yep. have things like beat, m- tired, right? moose lodge and a variety of things that he did, uh, police posse and um, these things that he did. Um, and he wouldn't return until 7 or 8. There'd be a few minutes, uh, you know, an hour or whatever before bedtime. Um, you know, It's tough to create a relationship with that. It really is. And then on the weekend, you know, oftentimes people schedule stuff. There's a lot of fathers that don't have that much time with their kids. All right, so we got about halfway through this list here. We're going to continue. If you are a homeschooling uh, parent, you want to add in something, feel free to join us at 855-450-FREE. Or if you just don't get it about homeschooling, well, if you've got questions, feel free. 855-450-FREE. It's Free Talk Live. It's fall flooring season with incredible deals on the hottest styles right now at Lumber Liquidator's Fall Flooring Kickoff Sale. Choose from over 400 great floors with over 20 laminate styles like American-made mahogany for just 49 cents a square foot. More than 30 bamboo floors like carbonized bamboo for only $159. And over 150 hardwood floors like pre-finished gunstock oak for only 99 cents. With a dollar off Bella with 20% off Dream Home Laminates. Plus great floors, wood like tile, vinyl, and more with 24-month special financing. The Fall Flooring Kickoff Sale is going on now. Visit LumberLiquidators.com to find a store near you. Here's a good idea. When you have a legal matter like creating your will or legally setting up a business with a corporation or LLC, you don't necessarily need a law firm. Use LegalZoom.com. At LegalZoom.com, you answer straightforward questions online, and they take care of the rest. They even review your answers for common mistakes and guarantee your satisfaction. 
Free Talk Live listeners, you'll get 10% off your order by typing in FTL in the referral box at purchase. Don't procrastinate with these important legal documents. LegalZoom.com. We use mobile devices right against our bodies every day, but growing scientific evidence has emerged showing serious health risks associated with exposure to EMF radiation emitted from these devices. The solution is Defender Shield, the most effective mobile radiation shielding ever developed. Defender Shield blocks virtually 100% of EMF radiation from cell phones, tablets, and laptops and starts at just $64.99. Buy now at DefenderShield.com. For 10% off, use promo code GCN. DefenderShield.com, the worldwide leader in mobile radiation shielding. No way. Is that a real bullet necklace? No, it's a 9 millimeter bullet necklace with matching earrings, you'll notice. Those are awesome. Where'd you get them? Dave found them at PatriotNecklace.com. Wow. They have a variety of calibers and necklaces and earrings and keychains. PatriotNecklace.com. PatriotNecklace.com. Your choice of caliber bullet includes a rugged American-made stainless steel dog tag chain. A percentage of every sale goes to military and service-related charities. And get a discount by entering GCN at checkout. Show your patriotism and support our troops with a bullet necklace from PatriotNecklace.com. Just recently, we've witnessed some of the most catastrophic disasters in history. Be sure to prepare yourself with great-tasting, high-quality, GMO-free food that has a 25-year shelf life. Of course, we're talking about the foods from SurvivalFoodAlliance.com. And don't forget, the human body needs up to three quarts of water every day to remain healthy and hydrated. So check out our water bricks at SurvivalFoodAlliance.com. Go to SurvivalFoodAlliance.com or call 877-223-1776. Don't complain about your cable bill going up and up and up. Do something about it. Grab a pencil and jot down this special number. 1-855-905-MY-TV. The more cable TV rates go up, the better digital satellite TV looks. Say goodbye to the cable guy. And get more of your favorite channels in 100% digital quality for less money. Call 1-855-905-MY-TV. Sign up for packages starting as low as $19.99 and there's no equipment to buy. You get free HD TV upgrade, a free DVR upgrade, and free professional and installation you control what you watch when you watch it record your favorite shows pause and rewind live tv even skip the commercials watch local channels too at just $19.99 what are you waiting for pull out your major credit or debit card call 1-855-905-MY-TV 1-855-905-MY-TV say goodbye to the cable guy cut costs and get more 1-855-905-MY-TV 1-855-905-MY-TV KDArmor.com is your one-stop shop for the most affordable body armor, period. With packages starting at $169.99 and free shipping on every order. KD offers soft armor and rifle threat rated armor up to level 4. Go to KDArmor.com and get your body armor today while you still can. Mention this ad and receive a free tactical scarf for a limited time with any body armor package. That's KATIArmor.com. Come and take it. You're listening to Free Talk Live. Call in toll-free at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-FREE. Oh yeah, it's Free Talk Live. You can dial in toll-free here to join us on the live Sunday edition of the program. We are in the midst of the seven things you should never say to a homeschooling mom, and we're going to continue with that list here. I also want to let you know that you can get interactive over at freetalklive.com. You can help support the show by becoming a Free Talk Live amplifier. Just go to amp.freetalklive.com. AMP, A-M-P, stands for Advertise, Market, and Promote. And the idea is for five bucks a month, we'll invest that five bucks into our show, get on more radio stations around the country, bring more internet listeners on board, expose new people to the ideas of freedom. And you get perks too, the Amp Only Facebook group, Amp Only uh, Forum, there's the Amp Only Podcast, which doesn't have the same commercials that uh, all the commercials that our normal podcast does. Not that our normal podcast has a lot, uh, but you get none of them. It's commercial free. Yeah, with the Amp version. So go to amp.freetalklive.com. It helps us out a lot, and you get perks. Once again, that's amp.freetalklive.com. Let's go to the phones before we continue with more of this list. Now we've got Liberty Phoenix on the line, I believe, in Illinois. Liberty Phoenix, you're on Free Talk Live via Skype. Do we have Liberty Phoenix? Liberty Phoenix going once. Liberty Phoenix going twice. We made There we go. Hey. Take off the mute. That helps. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> Gentlemen, it's been a long time. I uh, appreciate your time. 
Um, I just, I really want to, this has absolutely nothing to do with the topic or the list that you guys have been discussing, but Mark, you had said that you discourage against individuals uh, self-incriminating to you or something to that effect. Um, I just wanted to know, like, why would you not want people to tell you about that stuff? I mean, I would see that as kind of a cry for help as for, as far as like you assistance. Are, well, just to clarify, are you talking about the discussion we had about cleaning your house or something else? Uh, no, this was just a, uh, I just barely turned it on, on, on tune in and, okay. you know, I listened to maybe 30 seconds and I just heard Mark say something that totally off the wall. Excellent. Let's clarify that. He didn't want people to self-incriminate to himself. That was about like, the cleaning he thing. Didn't, now, right? he I didn't don't know if I use the term incriminate, but, um, uh, uh, what, what I was trying to say was, is that it seems really common in life when you go into somebody's house, you can go into somebody's house that's cleaner than your house. Yep. And that person apologizes for the state of their house. I do that. And I wonder to my, like, I'm just like, for, you're not saying that for me. Right. Like that apology isn't for me. That apology is for you. And I, 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 I don't really need your apology for the state of your house. There have been very few houses into which I have ventured that I've said to myself, whew, I got to get out of here. This place is awful. Um, you know, that's that's not how I feel about people's houses. And it's a judgment on to some extent. It can p appear as though a, it, it's a judgment on the visitor as opposed to what it in fact is, is just sort of a uh, as a look into the mind of the of the, the host. But See, I perceive it more as like a, a cry for help, like, hey, I'm sorry, my place is so crappy, um, you know. If they're if they're familiar with you, if you're actually you know in their house because you know them and they're saying that type of things, and considering the environment that you live in, if they're familiar with you and they're saying, "Oh, pardon me, pardon this," I would imagine that that would be some form of cry for help or assistance or, no. "Hey, you know, this is." No, pretty never, stuff. No, I mean, as some as the person here who does this on a fairly regular basis, I do it sometimes uh, too. It's definitely not a cry for help. I mean, I I don't say uh, to somebody, That's "Please so excuse the mess," because I want to them to level. start scrubbing the floor. Uh, or whatever. I, it's really just a. Yeah. It's really just a statement to let the person know that I am aware, as the host, that I am not doing the best job as a host. As a host, if I'm going to have someone come for a visit, I'd I'd like to have a clean place for that person to come visit, just because that's you know that's just the way I like to have things. And uh, and if I if I can't have it to that level, then I feel it deserves an, an apology. That's all. It's, I don't. I wouldn't say it's a cry for help. If you want to come scrub my floor, oh, I, though, Phoenix. Uh, Let's talk. Hey, I, I've done it before. I'll <laughs> begin. I'm just saying. By all means, come clean my house. <laughs> yeah, get, if, if it's twenty dollars an hour, I got you. If it's a cry for help, then um, you know, forget it. I need help with cleaning my house too. Hey, uh, Phoenix, anything okay, else you want to share tonight? That's about it. Thanks you guys have a wonderful night. tonight, man. Appreciate it. You can call on Skype and sound pretty darn good too. The Skype username is lrn.fm. One thing you do have to send a contact request first. We'll approve it as soon as we notice it come in. And then once you're approved, you can call from that point forward. Very cool. Very good Good to have Skype here because it sounds great. Uh, so once again, our toll-free number, if you'd prefer it the old method, you can call in. Toll-free at 855-453. Whether you want to comment on uh, keeping a clean house or educating students, uh, educating your kids at home, which is what sparked the conversation in the first place. Mark, let's go back to the seven things you're not supposed to say to a homeschooling mom. Or I guess it's more accurate. To, I mean, that's the title or whatever of the our article, but really it's like the seven things that homeschooling moms are sick of hearing, basically, yeah. because I, I don't think it's wrong to say these things. No, Gen I think generally, they come from a, a, a curiosity of, of not knowing what it's like to homeschool. Um, do you own anything besides yoga pants? And I think that what? these... Well, I think yoga pants are essentially pajamas. Um, that these are, all the college girls are wearing yoga pants. Yeah, but it's not like you're, you know, you're you're dressed up and ready to go. Um, you know, they're they're going everywhere with yoga pants. I on. understand. Um, they're the acceptable sweat pant. Okay, is, is what, I guess what I'm saying. Huh? Um, it, it, she says well, that's just not nice. Of course, we <laughs> no. own stuff besides yoga pants, but the yeah, other I would stuff say that's not nice. You isn't as conducive to wrestling kids, getting spit on, being the mm. cafeteria lady, maid, laundry lady, and pouring knowledge into the minds of our kids all day. Um, do we make fun of your work uniform? Not unless you're maybe your professional clown or something. Be nice. Yoga pants are awesome. Yeah, be nice. I wouldn't say that one. That's not a good question. I don't know. I mean, uh, being 
And yes, <laughs> yoga pants are awesome. Thank you, ladies. It's relatively <laughs> common. Um, I'm also a farmer besides uh, being a homeschooler. And it's relatively common in the sort of the farm world to do your chores before you eat your breakfast in your pajamas. So, mm-hmm. I mean, it's been far more than one time, um, probably about half the time of the week, I'm putting on uh, you know, my, my muck boots on with my pajamas and I'm going out and taking care of the pigs. Because, well, you know, the pajamas are going to go in a wash here anyway. Might as well just, uh, you know, wear them on out. It's something that's covering my nether regions, my unmentionables. And uh, the muck boots are what's going to get mostly dirty anyway. So, no big deal. And I think that uh, if you work at home, from home, pajamas are a relatively common thing. Mm -hmm. Uh, Homeschool moms and homeschool dads, they work from home. And that's what they work in. And yoga pants... Uh, pajamas, sweatpants, these things are... Totally nude. That's acceptable at the household. Yeah. Um, you know, I wouldn't go in a pig pen totally nude. <laughs> <laughs> they might be... mistake a little something for uh, they, they a might. meal. Here's a treat. <laughs> um, yeah. Well, I saw a story recently of a girl who got her finger bit off by a horse, so you got to be careful with that. Yeah, horses <laughs> horses can be really mean. Mm. Um but like the, you know, you can spend a lot of time with a horse and and that sort of thing and be, they can be very socialized to people and they'll still kick or bite yeah. somebody because they're, they're just sort of that way. Um for me, my pigs people can go right in the pen. I wouldn't have a pig uh that was was mean to people. Mm-hmm. There's no way. My 550 pound sow, uh Hazel I was just on her. Just on her. Was it this morning or yesterday? Had her ears in my hands and was, uh, you know, had my feet up off the ground, yelling "War pig!" You were riding your. I pig? was riding the pig. Yes. <laughs> and uh, that you know, should be a Kodak moment. That it, would be a good picture. Laura said she wished she'd had the camera. And to me, I, I think that you know, when you have an animal this big, you kind of want to mount. You know, just, just mount the animal. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's, it's that big. And there was a scene in um, the most recent. It was the Hobbit one uh, okay. with the seven. The, Never seen it. Yeah, the the army, the War of the Seven Armies, or whatever it was, where the dwarf uh, king was on the back of a uh, a pig. It looked like a boar instead, but you know, frankly, it looked like a uh, old spot boar, which are the n- most uh, the nicest of uh, of pigs out there. Now, when I say nice, I mean nice to humans. They're still ornery to each other. Okay. All right. Um, since you're home. This is uh, her going on with the list. Since you're home, would you mind babysitting for me? Now, just in case my uh, sister is reading, I have to point out that I offered to babysit for her, and she knows that she can call me if she needs me. This has never really been a problem for me, but I've read horror stories from friends. So just for the general public, uh, hello, we're doing school over here. Would you call the local elementary school and ask if one of the teachers could, could babysit, babysit for you? Yeah. During the school day? While she's teaching her class. Um, so there you go. I guess uh, in, you know, my my wife does trade-offs with people as far mm-hmm. as uh, watching kids. I mean, people are like, hey, I want my kid to come to the farm and see pigs and play at the pool and do those kind of things. So, you know, and then, you know, of course, they take the they take Jack, too. But at seven years old, I guess that's what people do. They just kind of trade kids off. Kids would like to get like to be together. What do we got? One more on this list? Uh, that That's pretty much it. All right, so your comments are welcome here. 855-450-FREE. Skype username, lrn.fm. What is it you don't get about homeschooling? If you have a question, Mark may have an answer because he's been doing this now for seven years. Yeah. Uh, Toll-free number, 855-450-FREE. Also, the crackdown on freedom of speech in front of the Supreme Court... When the leading antihistamine and Nasacort go nose to nose, Nasacort wins, stopping more of the chemical responses that can cause your nasal allergy symptoms. And when you stop more causes, you get 24 hour relief from sneezing, an itchy runny nose, even congestion. It's prescription strength medicine available over the counter. Nasacort Allergy 24 Hour stops more of what makes you miserable. Use as directed.
Free Talk Live has partnered with Amazon, the largest internet retailer. Imagine a department store category, and Amazon has it. Books, electronics, office products, furniture, jewelry, automotive, toys, clothing, sporting goods, and dozens of other categories. Now you can shop and support Free Talk Live by entering Amazon through our website. Go to shop.freetalklive.com, and Amazon will send us a portion of your purchase. You're going to do the shopping anyway, so remember to enter through our site at shop.freetalklive.com. That's shop.freetalklive.com. It's time to build your own emergency food stockpile with the industry leader, My Patriot Supply. Once you try them, you'll know why so many Americans like you have made them part of their emergency preparedness plan. Experience the My Patriot Supply difference today with this unbelievable offer. Right now, a four-week food supply is only $99, and that includes free shipping. That's 50% off the online price. Call 800-274-3070 to claim yours. Limit two per caller while supplies last. This offer isn't available online, so you want to make sure and grab this opportunity to get prepared today. 800-274-3070 to get your four-week food supply for the incredible price of only $99, and it'll be shipped to you completely free. Call 800-274-3070 right now. That's 800-274-3070 to claim yours while supplies last. Don't wait. Call today. Empowering with information. The Chris Geo Show. GCN. With SRN News, I'm Gordon Griffin. The suspect in the fatal shooting of a uniformed Harris County Sheriff's deputy in suburban Houston will be arraigned on capital murder charges tomorrow. Shannon Miles had a lengthy criminal record going back a decade, but never spent more than short stints in jail. Miles is accused of gunning down veteran deputy Darren Goforth as he was pumping gas on Friday. And God will raise you. Two Virginia television journalists who were shot and killed by a former co-worker last week being remembered by community religious leaders. The Reverend Tim Harvey, the pastor of Oak Grove Church of the Brethren, says Jesus told us how to respond to evil. Love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. The interfaith service was held today at the Jefferson Center in Roanoke for 24-year-old reporter Allison Parker and 27-year-old cameraman Adam Ward. Also at SRNNews.com, Jeff Merkley has become the 31st senator to announce support for the Iran nuclear deal. The Oregon Democrat put supporters within reach of the 34 votes required to uphold a presidential veto of a congressional resolution disapproving the agreement. Meanwhile, opponents of the deal are ramping up efforts ahead of the vote. GOP presidential hopefuls Donald Trump and Ted Cruz are among those invited to address the rally, sponsored by a coalition of groups that oppose the deal, among them the Tea Party Patriots. Cruz is the keynote speaker. He invited Trump to take part. The rally is scheduled for next Wednesday on the West Lawn of the U.S. Capitol, just nine days before the deadline for Congress to hold an up or down vote. Capitol Hill correspondent Wally Hines reporting the governor of Hawaii and the mayor of Maui have signed emergency proclamations as the islands prepare for high winds, heavy rain, and ocean swells from an approaching storm. Forecasters say Hurricane Ignacio has been downgraded to a Category 3 storm. This is SRN News. What's the best way to bring people together? T-shirts! T-shirts. Custom t-shirts that you design online with custom ink. The fun, easy way to make shirts you'll love for your group or occasion. Custom Ink has created over 50 million shirts for families, teams, reunions, church groups, cheerleaders, companies big and small. So go online and see how easy it is to design your own shirts with Custom Ink's online design lab. Our website has tons of fonts and amazing artwork. And our team of professional inkers will make sure your shirts turn out perfectly. Order one shirt or thousands. On-time delivery is guaranteed, and we'll even ship your order absolutely free. Start designing your custom ink t-shirts today and see why 99% of our customers say they would order from us again. Visit customink.com. Some, say, some analysts say the world is facing its greatest refugee crisis since World War II. We get details now from Connie Lawn. Wars in the Middle East and Africa and corruption and brutality in Latin America are producing a massive refugee crisis in the U.S. and Europe. 
Immigration is, of course, a major issue here. Overseas, the Washington Post says nearly 4 million refugees have fled from Syria. They are changing the face of the countries they are able to reach in Europe. Many refugees die horrible deaths, such as the 71 who died in a truck abandoned in Austria. Connie Lawn reporting from Washington. There has been lots of talk about securing the U.S. border with Mexico, but Wisconsin Governor Scott Walker says there's also reason for concern about the border to the north. The Republican presidential hopeful says building a wall along the Canadian border with Canada is a legitimate idea that merits further review. This is SRN News. Hoping to get a bigger piece of the international tourism pie, Las Vegas is embarking on a major airport expansion. Vegas plans to double the number of international gates at McCarran International Airport. The expectation is that foreign traffic will climb as officials seek out prized direct flights, especially with Asia. Among the new gates would be one to accommodate wide-body, double-decker A380 aircraft for the first time at the airport. McCarran served almost 43 million passengers last year, making it the ninth busiest airport in the U.S. Correspondent Rich Thomas in the Christian drama War Room made a surprise bid for the box office lead. The Sony TriStar movie release, which finished in second place, took in $11 million by appealing to faith-based audiences on an often powerful but underserved demographic at the multiplex. More details at srnnews.com. I'm Gordon Griffin. We, the people, grow cotton, weave fabric, engrave ink, embed strips and fibers to protect from counterfeit, and carting to a private bank, having it led back at interest, forcing taxes to service debt. This capitalism, or was Jefferson correct when stating a central bank issuing the public currency is a greater menace to the liberties of the people than a standing army? Ted Anderson, I'm placing a free silver dollar in a book that explains our monetary system. Call for your copy, 800-686-2237. It's time to understand the system. Call 800-686-2237. That's 800-686-2237. We, we, we are a survival company. We manufacture our own line of Level 3 and Level 3A body armor. We proudly make our armor 100% in America. We have the best prices in the nation, about $125 cheaper than our nearest competitor. All lab certified, for thou art my rock and my fortress, Psalm 31.3. We are Fortress Survival, LLC. Dot, dot, dot com. Talk Live. You can join us here toll free, 855 450 free. We've discussed uh, freedom of speech and homeschooling. And you're still welcome to call in if you have any questions about homeschooling. We talked about some of the things that you're not supposed to say to homeschooling parents or moms. And really, it was more of a list of the questions that homeschooling moms and dads get asked incessantly. And that doesn't mean you shouldn't ask those questions. It just means that you know, understand that. It can be a little frustrating to get the same questions over and over again, but that's just sort of part and parcel of doing something unusual uh, and having people being curious about it. So I don't think it's a bad thing that that people are curious about these things. Let's go to your calls and thoughts here. We do have Skype, by the way. You can Skype into the show at username lrn.fm. Let's go to Drew in Des Moines on Skype. Hello, Drew. Hey, I just wanted to say that I just saved 30% on purse. Whoa. I bought a Spyderco pocket knife. Sweet. Yeah, so I, I saved about $15. How long did it take for the order to get fulfilled? Less than one day. It was for 30%? Basically, it was basically overnight. It was it was about the time that Bitcoin was around $200, so I think that might have had something to do with it. More people were looking to redeem their Amazon credit to get more Bitcoin. So what you're referring to is you used saveitpurse.com to purchase a product on Amazon, in this case a knife. Uh, for thirty percent off by using Bitcoin. Yep. Was it your first time? No, I've done I think six now. Awesome. About six. So you are a return happy customer. <laughs> oh yeah. So I like to hear. So what else were you calling about tonight besides that? Well, um, when I when I hear people talk about homeschool, like the first two things that usually come to my mind are one was already mentioned was what do you do all day? But I think that one it's pretty obvious you're. You're, you're schooling your child at home. And we are, you guys already talked about that. The other thing that I 
don't think I heard mentioned in the story was um, kind of, the, I know what I've heard other people say is, well, what makes you think that you're, you're going to be a better teacher than someone who went to school to be a teacher and got a teaching degree? Well, I guess the question I... That's uh, a good question. Yeah, yeah I, I think so. I think that that is in the area of magical thinking. What do you expect from, say, elementary, you know, kindergarten through sixth grade? What do you expect the teachers to teach your kid? Hello? Can, um, can you hear? Oh, you know what? We're having uh, an internet dropout right now, Mark. I'm sorry okay. that uh, Drew is unable to respond to your question. Yeah, so what I, I'm going to answer the question. You want your kid to be able to do basic, basic math skills, addition, subtraction, multiplication, division. You want them to be able to read. Right, um, you know, get work on the beginning to compose paragraphs, sentences, and paragraphs, and things like that. And other than that, that's basically what you're looking for from your kid. There may be a certain sort of social studies aspects to it, but I think that uh, you know, for me, uh, that's that's the easiest part, right? Like I'm going to talk to my son about s uh, social issues anyway, so um, you know, no problem there. The, the issues are really the uh, the reading, writing, and arithmetic um, ones. And who can't teach these things? Kids' minds are like sponges. Um, uh, we were having, I guess we were having a little bit of trouble with math, right? Like I thought, huh, it'll be easy. We'll just use coins. And that didn't really work out the way that I'd hoped. So my wife went on the internet. She starts looking around. She found a, a, a course, um, a book, a set of books called, I think it's The Life of Fred. Um, and Jack, uh, rather being told stories about math, immediately picks, his, picks it up. Within a couple of weeks, he's doing uh, better with uh, math than he has with me spending any time with him as far as uh, uh, coins and, and that sort of thing. So, um, you know, ultimately, I've just got to say that it's... Uh, it's not that difficult when you're talking about up to sixth grade. Now, that is the only thing that I've asked for, um, really, in, to my own mind, is from kindergarten through sixth grade, I believe that my son will be, um, you know, uh, prepared. Now, from what I understand in the reading, in the course reading I've done, um, you know, some of the things I've looked at is that kids don't learn that much in middle school, that it's just that sort of age um, where they're just not uh, in integrating ideas or something like that. I don't know what that means. It's something that I, uh, maybe it's school and not home schools. I don't know what, exactly what, uh, what, what occurs there, but when it comes to middle school, I have no intention of sending my uh, son to, uh, to middle school. But remember, this is family-directed learning. So if he decides for whatever reason he's desperate to go to school, then we can talk about going to school. But at this point, he sees the benefits. Because one of the, remember, learning's uh, important, but so is brain chemistry. And kids that don't get enough sleep, which a lot of kids aren't, they're getting up at so Six, early. Six, five. What time do they have to get up to go to school these days? I don't know. It's but crazy. I know when I was a kid, my mother um, was. <laughs> She, she was having me get dressed, and then I'd go back to sleep uh, because we, you know, we'd have to drive into town to take me to school, and uh, then I'd stay. This my is one of the worst parts about going to school, I think. I mean, besides all the bad things that happen at school, is the getting up to actually go to school. I don't know if we have Drew back, but we've had some major internet uh, outage here for the last couple minutes here on Free Talk Live. Drew, do we still have you? No, I think we've I think we've lost Drew. See, uh, you're such point. a big fan of Skype, but uh, you know sometimes it's not Skype's fault if your internet fails completely. Yes, but it's not Skype's fault. It is, however, your fault for relying on the internet. When I, I've never heard a phone line drop out. Sure, that happens too. Copper, come on, man. Cell phones. Cell Those phones. Drop I'm talking all the about time. copper. Yeah. Okay. Well, in that case, you we've actually had the network has had total phone outages. Yeah, I guess that does happen now and then. But that's that has less to do with the copper and more to do with the network. And we can still give out the phone lines here to the comes to the studio hardwired in. Yeah. Actually, our phone lines here are uh, voice over IP, so okay. you can't call those right now because the there's, internet has dropped out. There's one landline that uh, that you can call on, but actually, that's uh, for, that's what the ones the feds uh, the federal prisoners call us on oh, all I the see. time. Yeah. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, uh, actually, I think we got Drew back here. He just called back in via Skype. Drew, um, I don't know how much of that you heard that Mark was explaining, but your comments. Go ahead. Drew. 
going once, going twice. All right. Apparently, uh, even though he was able to call back, he was not able to Just speak to back. us. Yeah. So, uh, Mark, uh, was there more that you wanted to say on that topic? On homeschooling? I'm not worried. <laughs> okay, okay. Look, I was a teacher's aide in government high school. And that meant that, you know, I was in Algebra 1 class. The, uh, the the teacher there decided that I would be his aide. I didn't even ask to do this. He just, like, you know, picked the biggest sucker, I think, um, and said that, uh, you know, hey, uh, can you, you know, take care of this? And so basically I graded tests and uh, graded homework and, and things like that. Um, I graded – he did two classes. He did Algebra 1, which was – I was in as a freshman, and then he did Consumer Math. The highest grade, the highest math that you had to pass in order to get a high school diploma from the state of Florida was consumer math. So I saw the highest grade, you know, grade that you had to get in order to get a high school diploma. And that was, there was no algebra. It was addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. The kind of stuff that I was working on in sixth grade. Um I mean, this was real sort of uh, Jethro, Bodine, uh, Beverly Hillbillies kind of math. Nothing to it. And this was the highest grade you needed to complete uh, the, you know, that uh, to get a high school diploma. Now, in order to get the Florida Academic Scholarship, which you were awarded, I believe, Ian, um, and I, would, I think I was eligible for it too, but never went to college, um, went to prison instead, um, you had to have – Either algebra, algebra, or ge- geometry, or something like that. I think we do know. have Drew back now. Final uh, t- attempt here. Drew, go ahead. Hello. Go ahead quickly with your thoughts. Yeah, I, I heard some of what Mark was talking about of the going to school and the kids together. And um, sort of my experience was I was in a private school basically from preschool through sixth grade. Um, actually, the last, in the sixth grade, um, I was in a class of six. But um, I would say I'm 27 now. I would say I learned probably more in those six years of private school than I learned all the rest um, in the public school, graduating from high school in a public school. And I I thank my parents a lot um, for sending me. And basically what I learned in the private school was how to learn. And awesome. The, just the ways they taught me were much better than anything. Thanks for your diligence school. tonight trying to get back on with us, yep. Drew. More coming up here. This is Free Talk Live, 855-450, free if you want to join us on the radio. Every once in a while, you get information that's worth changing your life for. This is one such time. You can save up to and beyond 25% on all purchases at Amazon. You probably heard of Bitcoin and just not thought much about it. You certainly know that you can get competitive pricing at Amazon, but now you can get a 25% discount on nearly everything you need to live. I've just given you a huge raise, and all you have to do is claim it. You go to purse.freetalklive.com and open an account. Do this right now. Don't wait. Then you fund the account with Bitcoin. You can buy them through expresscoin.com with a check or money order. There are other ways to get Bitcoin, but that's fast, safe, and easy. This information is worth you changing the way you do things. Go to purse.freetalklive.com right now and get signed up and cash in on the huge raise I'm offering you. 25% off of everything on Amazon through purse.freetalklive.com. It's purse.freetalklive.com. That's the sound your brain makes when you realize you're buying something and forgot the coupon. Online or in a store, knowing that you're missing a deal is the worst. You need the app from Retail Me Not right now. Get thousands of coupons from 50,000 stores like Kohl's, Domino's, Best Buy, and more with crazy deals like 60% off, free shipping, and free gifts with purchase. You can get a text invite to download the Retail Me Not app 100% free right now for Apple or Android. Just text the code UPDATE to 42767. Then just show your phone at checkout to save. It literally couldn't be easier. It's 2015. Keep your coupon in your phone. Stop what you're doing and text UPDATE to 42767. Listeners will get a text with a link to download it 100% free. Never forget another coupon again. Text the code UPDATE to 42767 right now. That's UPDATE to 42767. Message and data rates may apply. For terms and privacy, visit RetailMeNot.com. This is Dan Pillett. Do you owe the IRS money you can't pay? Are tax debts crippling you? I've defended people from the IRS for over 30 years. I've helped thousands, and I can help you too. I wrote the book on IRS settlement, and I'm telling you, 
There's no such thing as a hopeless case. Call 800-34-NO-TAX to finally get free of IRS debt. With the IRS's new programs, there's never been a better time to solve your problem. Call 800-34-NO-TAX. That's 800-34-NO-TAX or my website, danpilla.com. Are you tired of commuting to a job that makes someone else rich? Working harder than ever, but getting nowhere? Do you hate spending hundreds of dollars every week on daycare? Having someone else raise your children? With our opportunities, you can start earning money as soon as next week. You get to be the boss, work from home, and live a happier life. At Be The Boss Network, you'll find hundreds of work-from-home opportunities that you can literally start today and be earning money as soon as next week. Go to freedom106.com and start earning money as soon as next week. You get to be the boss. Get out of the rat race. Work from home. Go to freedom106.com right now and change your life today. That's freedom, the number 106.com. Go to freedom106.com and start earning money as soon as next week. You be the boss. Go to freedom106.com. My name is Dell, and I live in El Cajon, California. I was concerned about my cholesterol readings because I knew that high cholesterol is related to clogging of the arteries and increases the risk for heart attack and stroke. One day, I heard an ad for heart and body extract, and I was skeptical, but I decided to give it a try. Man, the numbers don't lie. Learn the secrets of an effective, natural, 100% organic nutritional supplement for a healthy heart and circulation at hbextract.com. Now, more Free Talk Live. Call in toll-free at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-FREE. It's Free Talk Live, the live Sunday edition. You can join us on the radio waves by dialing toll-free. The number for you, 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. We also have other things to talk about besides homeschooling tonight, including yet another restriction on classic free speech. Uh, And that classic free speech I'm referring to is speech on public property, specifically speech in traditional public forums like government property, like, you know, the courthouse steps, for instance, Uh, the the sidewalk. Now, the sidewalk hasn't been cracked down on in Washington, D.C., in front of the Supreme Court, but there's been a court decision that has decided, now not the Supreme Court, but a uh, district court of the federal type, has uh, District Court of Appeals, has decided that uh, there will be no more protesting. There will be no more free speech on the Supreme Court steps and if you want a, a state supreme or federal supreme federal okay if you want a, a sort of a an example of one of the most important places to have free speech it would probably be on the courthouse steps seems like it's there yeah uh so we're gonna get into that also i want you to know about how to protect yourself online because you have to take the steps to do this uh at least when your internet service is working and ours is having difficulty right now but uh, if you've got internet, then you can get Pro XPN. Whether you have Windows, Mac, iOS, Android, or Linux, there's support for you. You can download Pro XPN, get it installed in just moments. In fact, you can do it right now for free at ProXPN.com. They will encrypt your internet connection, which means your own internet service provider will no longer know what you're doing online. And that's valuable because they will sell that information. And if they don't have the information, they can't sell it. And they certainly can't turn it over to the government either. And unlike those other guys offering virtual private networks, ProXPN keeps no logs of your activities. They've got more servers than ever, and they accept credit card and Bitcoin. You get 50% off their annual, uh, excuse me, you get 50% off their regular monthly price when you buy the annual account with code FTL50. And that means it can be cheaper than a good cup of coffee every month. ProXPN.com. You can use code FTL50 and take back the privacy that is your right. Here is the news from, and it's not good news, from the Washington Post. The story came out uh, two days ago. The Supreme Court is designated as the ultimate protector of constitutional rights. But the guarantee of protest and free speech apparently ends on the steps to the plaza in front of the court's Grand Marble Temple, according to a unanimous federal appeals court panel. 
on Friday. Demonstrators are allowed on the sidewalk in front of the court, but not any closer to the famous portico promising so-called equal justice under law. Uh, three judges of the U.S. Court of Appeals for the District of Columbia Circuit decided the fight over where protesters get to protest has been going on for years. An appeals court judge, hep, uh, appeals court judges uh, rather, upheld the 1949 law that forbids demonstrations on the grounds of the high court on the premise that protests at the court's doorstep might lead to the perception that the justices are swayed by vox populi rather than by the diktats of the law. Now, apparently— well, they are. What do you mean? Um, well, so what's obvious, and I've seen it uh, recently, I believe it was Judge Kennedy referring to the uh, gay marriage uh, ruling, um, the gay marriage ruling, and there was a, a ruling similar to that previously. But let's use the Plessy versus Ferguson, uh, Brown versus the Topeka Board of Education uh, debacle thing. There was a time when the uh, Supreme Court of the United States said that separate but equal, meaning that uh, you know water fountains and bathrooms and entrances for black people, um, as long as them being separate, as long as you know they were equal, that that was fine. And then some decades later, said that separate was not equal. And that everything, you know, that, that that there had to be integration, essentially. Mm -hmm. These two rulings are sort of in opposition to each other. Uh, they, uh, you know, one at one point the the federal the, the the Supreme Court, who is supposed to interpret the Constitution, the law, the highest law in the land, uh, you know, views the law in one way, and then they view it in another because they are swayed by vox populi, and that's the voice of the people. Uh, the And with the, um, I think it was with the gay marriage thing, but I'm trying to remember exactly which case it was, but Judge Kennedy recently regarding uh, gays or something, maybe it was gays in the military, I think that's what it was on, was basically saying that, look, the, uh, the preferences of Americans have changed. Hmm. Now, um, you know, gay people should have the same rights as um, uh, straight people. Well, fine. That's I don't disagree with your statement, but that doesn't have anything to do with the Constitution. Mm. You see, the Constitution would treat people fairly at any point, and that would mean that uh, you know the, the the judges weren't swayed by vox populi. But he's basically admitting that they were. Well, so in this case, they're using that as the excuse to say there will be no more free speech. The idea is that well. If we just let these people have their free speech on the courthouse steps, then there could be a presumption. People might see that as swaying these justices. Hmm. Whereas if they uh, are protesting elsewhere, that apparently won't have the same effect. If they're on the courthouse steps, then that means more or whatever. It's ridiculous. I would imagine the justices don't exactly mount the courthouse steps um, on a day-to-day -day basis. You think they go in the back door? I imagine they go in the back door. I imagine they have uh, meals served to them at inside the building. Mm -hmm. I imagine they leave. Uh, they may very well have black cars with drivers that take them. Yeah, I'd be um, interested to know that. Uh, I don't know what the specifics are. Some of them m you know, certainly may drive to work. U.S. Circuit Judge Sri Srin Srinivasan, Sri Srinivasan wrote this, quote, allowing demonstrations directed at the court on the court's own front terrace would tend to yield the opposite impression, that of a court engaged with and potentially vulnerable to outside entreaties by the public. Now, this uh, this is a circuit judge who actually argued often before the court as a lawyer and is sometimes mentioned as a future Supreme Court justice. On days when controversial cases are argued and decided, the 50-foot-wide sidewalks surrounding the court are filled with chanting, Flag-waving, bullhorn-toting protesters of all stripes. <laughs> Just your kind of people, Ian. The Supreme Court itself in 1983 ruled that these sidewalks uh, are open for protests, but demonstrators are not allowed any closer. The court in its 1983 decision did not address the protest restrictions on the court's grounds, which include the 252 by 98-foot oval marble plaza with its fountains, beaches, or excuse me, benches, flagpoles, and steps. It'd be nice if it had a beach too. Leading for the to the court's iconic six ton bronze doors. Critics have found the no speech zone around the Supreme Court ironic, if not hypocritical. 
The current court considers itself a fierce protector of political speech, knocking down restrictions on corporate spending on elections, for instance. The justices also struck a Massachusetts law that limited speech around abortion clinics. But their courthouse is being protected by the... Uh, the appeals court. In this case, again, this case has not yet gone to the Supremes themselves. In 2010, because of security concerns, the court said the public was so-called no longer allowed to enter through the massive front doors. Visitors must now go through security checkpoints on the ground floor, although they may exit via the court's front porch. Yeah, it'd be neat to pass through those those doors. I didn't even know about that. No, I don't know much about it either. Uh, you can share your thoughts here. There's more to say about this decision. No free speech allowed. On courthouse grounds. Does anybody actually agree with that decision? 855 450 free. You can share your thoughts on Free Talk Live. By now, you know that wireless technology like cell phones do, in fact, pose dangers to the health and privacy of everyone. Blocket Pocket's wide range of products are unmatched in providing the protection you deserve. No scare tactics, just common sense. BlockitPocket.com offers quality American made options to alleviate and eliminate these invisible dangers. Learn more at BlockitPocket.com or call 888 315 9618. BlockitPocket.com, enhancing health and privacy. KDArmor.com is your one-stop shop for the most affordable body armor, period. With packages starting at $169.99 and free shipping on every order. KD offers soft armor and rifle threat rated armor up to level 4. Go to KDArmor.com and get your body armor today while you still can. Mention this ad and receive a free tactical scarf for a limited time with any body armor package. That's KDArmor.com. Come and take it. Do you owe the IRS money? Do you have years of unfiled returns? Has the IRS garnished your wages or put a lien against your house? The IRS has the power to make you pay back what they claim you owe and will stop at nothing to collect. If you are losing sleep over your IRS tax problem, there is a solution. Call Signature Tax now. Speak with our professionals and feel the weight of your tax burden lifted from your shoulders. Call 800-643-4661 for your free and confidential analysis on ending your tax nightmare. We can help get your life back on track and give you the fresh start you deserve. Our A-plus BBB-rated tax resolution team has over 125 years of combined experience to get you the best deal possible while stopping the IRS dead in their tracks. Call Signature Tax now at 800-643-4661. Call 800-643-4661. Again, that's 800-643-4661. 800-643-4661. So I say to Mark at lunch, look, you know, I keep hearing from the government that, you know, they're worried someday ISIS may get here. And I go, duh, uh, Garland, Texas, Muhammad cartoon shooting. ISIS is already here. I'm not waiting for these people to defend me. I, if they don't know ISIS is here already, they got no clue. I'm taking care of myself. Guns80.com, AR-15 kits, 30-shot magazines, great prices. They've even got the Hillary special. Guns80.com, that's 844-2-GUNS-80, guns80.com. Making the right decisions is a challenge to investors. Are we going to see economic growth, slide into a recession, or at worst, depression? Hi, Ted Anderson from Midas Resources. We all know when a company acts irresponsibly, divesting ourselves in a move towards safety is prudent. When the market becomes volatile, U.S. Treasuries are a safe haven. But what do you do when the U.S. government overextends itself and spends beyond its means? Many investors are turning toward gold as a common-sense alternative to traditional paper investments. Midas Resources has put together a powerful book titled 10 Reasons to Own Gold, discussing costs, benefits, risks, featuring full-color illustrations, weights, and measures. The book is free and can be yours by calling 800-686-2237. Paper investments are dwarfed by gold's 6,000-year history. Discover how gold may be right for you and your IRA by calling 800-686-2237. Whether buying or it's time for you to sell, the book is free. Call 800-686-2237. Are you excited? Excited about the World Wide Web? Do you want a place where you can share your ideas and express yourself? Well, dial up your modems and stream on down to the GCN Live Community Forum. Lots of radical features await you there. Wow, Internet guy. I am so glad I went to the GCN Live Community Forum. You too can discover why the World Wide Web is awesome. Just go to GCNlive.com slash forum. That's GCNlive.com slash forum. I'll see you in cyberspace. Space. Friend at GCN Live on Diaspora and Cross.tv. 
This is Free Talk Live. Call in toll free. 855 450 free. That's 855 450 free. This is Free Talk Live. You're invited to join us here on the radio waves. 855-450-FREE is our toll-free number, live Sunday edition here for you. In the studio, you've got Ian. And Mark. And you can join us online. Just go to freetalklive.com. Please enjoy the features you'll find there. Uh, They're all totally free. Now, Keenvention is coming up. It is happening in literally two months from today. uh, It's going to be the 30th of October through November 1st. So, Halloween weekend. And Halloween this year is actually on a Saturday night, so it'll be right there in the middle of Keenvention. Should be a lot of fun. We're going to be having the Hallow Keen costume dance party. Our very own Derek J. Freeman is going to be coming back from San Francisco to join us for that. So that's going to be a lot of fun. It's going to be a big, big deal, yeah. Yeah, and of course, great panel discussions are expected. Everything from how to create your own media to the uh, cop block panel and uh, legislative panels. So we've got all kinds of, we've got like uh, almost a dozen panels that are lined up. You can go and learn about those at keenvention.info. We've got three great keynote speakers lined up, including our very own Chris Cantwell, uh, Chris Reitman, the Oath Keeper, who we've had on the show a couple of times. He's mm-hmm. going to be one of the uh, the keynote speakers. And Chris Cantwell, as well as uh, Daryl W. Perry, going to be speaking as keynote addresses at this year's Keenvention. It's an activist convention that focuses on the New Hampshire-based activism that we talk so much about uh, on occasion here on Free Talk Lab. A lot of the names you've heard behind microphones on this show and a lot of the people we've talked to and about, like Dave Ridley, a lot of these people have come to Keenvention over the years, and I can't promise Dave's going to be at this one, but uh, there are going to be a number of people who are, who hopefully you'll want to meet if you've been paying any attention at all to what goes on up here in New Hampshire. If you're considering making a move here as part of the Free State Project, this is a perfect opportunity to check out Keen and the surrounding area uh, Keenvention's a great little time. It's a, it's an intimate convention, which means you get to meet everybody. There's probably going to be no more than 100 or so people there throughout the entire weekend. So if there's been somebody you've been wanting to meet, whether it's Chris Cantwell or whoever, uh, they're, they're going to be there. So go and learn about who's speaking thus far. We haven't made all of the speaker announcements quite yet, but you can go and get your tickets for 60 bucks for the entire weekend or Bitcoin equivalent. So go to Keenvention.info to learn more. That's Keenvention.info. And, of course, there's a Facebook page and a Facebook event and all that kind of stuff. Keenvention.info. As we go back to the story here from the Washington Post about the Supreme Court, apparently, now this is news to me. I don't live in D.C., so I don't know what all the various restrictions on free speech they have in this place. And I don't want to live in D.C., Uh, But apparently there's a 1949 law that forbid demonstrations on the grounds of the high court. And this has now been upheld. Here we are in 2015. (laughs) And this law uh, has now been upheld by the Columbia, District of Columbia Circuit Court of Appeals, federal court. Uh, More from the story. In, In 1949, they made it unlawful to, quote, parade, stand or move in processions or assemblages in the Supreme Court building or grounds, or to display in the building and grounds a flag, banner, or device designed or adapted to bring into public notice a party, organization, or movement. So you can't uh, do any kind of protesting or outreach whatsoever uh, within the Supreme Court grounds or inside the building. In 2013, U.S. District Judge Beryl Howell struck down the restrictions, writing in a 68-page opinion, quote, (laughs) It cannot possibly be consistent with the First Amendment for the government to so broadly prohibit expression in virtually any form in front of a courthouse, even the Supreme Court, he wrote. Within days, the Supreme Court instituted its own rules that essentially kept the restrictions in place, and the legal fight has continued. Now, the judge. The Supreme Court issued rules that kept the restrictions in place. So the Supreme Court will will rule on whether or not people can protest at a courthouse in like a county or city courthouse or whatever, mm-hmm. but when it comes to their courthouse, they've got special rules. Well, I uh, I don't know what the Supreme Court would think about other court prohibitions. So it seems to me um, when you think about courts and this is Precedent is important when you're looking at uh, common, English common law, upon which uh, the U.S. Uh, judicial system is based, that uh, the courthouse is a place of protest. and It seems like a traditional public forum, which would mean it should be a place for that kind of thing. And I've got to say that it seems hypocritical for the Supreme Court to 
because I really I didn't hear they they tend to say stay as silent as they possibly can. Right. Then their ruling kind of showed where they were on this. Now I don't know when it was. When was the, that it's, ruling? That so we're talking about. There's different time frames here. There's yep. the 1949 federal statute that that's, makes it illegal. That's a federal statute written the, by legislators. Right. The 2013 I, judge 2013. at the district level struck down those uh, that statute. Yep. Now the appeals court for the District of Columbia has reversed. Right. So the Supreme Court hasn't actually weighed in on this except yes, to except to institute their own rules that have kept the restrictions in place. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah. So but, but there hasn't been an actual ruling in in a case yet. And whether this is going to appeal be appealed to that Supreme Court also remains to be seen. It seems pretty likely that a, a court that would uh, make the rules that you can't protest at it would, would also those. rule that you cannot protest at it, right? I suspect you're right about that, which is why I don't know if they're going to bother appealing this. Howell was considering a challenge, this is the judge, uh, brought by Harold Hodge of Southern Maryland, who was arrested in January of 2011 for standing on the plaza wearing a three-by-two-foot sign that read, quote, the U.S. government allows police to illegally murder and brutalize African Americans and Hispanic people, unquote. Hodge was represented by the Rutherford Institute, a nonprofit civil liberties group that denounced Friday's ruling. John Whitehead, the head of the Rutherford Institute, they do great work there, by the way, at Rutherford. They, they do a lot of uh, real civil liberties kind of uh, work and protecting religious liberties as well. He said this, if citizens cannot stand out in the open and voice their disapproval of their government, its representatives and its policies without fearing prosecution, then the First Amendment is little more than window dressing on a store window. Yeah. Pretty to look at, but serving little real purpose. He continued saying that through a series of carefully crafted legislative steps and politically expedient court rulings, government officials have managed to disembowel this fundamental freedom. I, I'm of the opinion that uh, the Bill of Rights has been eroded over time anyway. No doubt, but the freedom of speech has been one of the tougher ones to uh, to erode. I mean, they still have to... They still have to play to that one. They still have to, in order to have the semblance it's of simple, a free country, people can understand it. Yeah, in order to have the semblance of a free country that people, you know, they want to, they want people to believe this about about America, and I think fewer and fewer people are believing this uh, as time goes I on. I don't think people have a much uh, value for it because you know what they understand is is that if they can uh, if they can go after free speech, then they can go after people that disagree with them. That they don't understand right. that it's unpopular speech that needs to be protected in the first place. That that's what free speech is. It's unpopular speech. Exactly. And you should be able to say those unpopular things in places in which you can be seen, which is sort of the uh, the historic re one of the historic uses for public property, these traditional public forums. Traditional public forums include places like the sidewalk. It include places like government parks and also government buildings. These are classic traditional public forums where people have historically been able to express themselves. And if you take away the Supreme Court, one of the most of you know one of the longest running traditional public forums, then that is just the first in an opening salvo of various different attacks that you can expect to come. Oh, well, well, so what they'll say is in their next argument to restrict freedom of speech in let's say in front of your city hall. The argument will be well, the federal government has upheld this ruling by the court that says that uh, you can't speak in front of the Supreme Court, so therefore now you can't speak in front of City Hall. So therefore now you can't speak in the, on the sidewalk. So therefore now you, it, just, it just goes from there. They'll always use the latest destruction of freedom as their excuse for the next one. It makes perfectly – yeah, but what you say makes perfectly good sense to me. And I'd also ask people if they support this. And I can't imagine anybody – if you support the idea that uh, protesters should be kept off the steps of the, the Supreme Court, then please give us a call at 855-450-FREE and articulate to me why that is. Because at this point, I don't get it. However, um, I would wonder to myself is, is where do you relevantly protest, say, a Supreme Court ruling? Um, not the, to say that it's very effectual to, uh, protest, to protest is generally ineffectual, but yep. it's a way for people to express themselves. But where, where are you, if a Supreme Court rules in a way that you disagree with, where are you supposed to protest well, that? Uh, right now, they'll let you do it on the sidewalk, out front. Yeah, nice. Not on the property. 855-450-FREE. If you want to share your thoughts, you're welcome to join us Lots here. Lots of places don't let you protest on the sidewalk, too. 855-450-FREE. Join us on Skype as well. Skype username is lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. This message is for home intruders. 
The cowards who break into people's homes to steal their hard-earned property. Criminals who shatter lives and rob people of their privacy and security. Listen very carefully. We're the home security experts at LiveWatch, and we're taking you down. Because we're letting everyone try our newest home security system for one full year in their home. To take advantage of this amazing offer, call now, 1-800-670-9259. LiveWatch has been helping protect homes for years, and we've learned the secrets that intruders like you don't want people to know. Criminals, it's time for you to be afraid, because every person who calls will be protected against cowards like you. To the criminals listening, we're taking you down. To those who want to help protect their homes, call the security experts to try the LiveWatch security system. There are no long-term contracts, and if you're not completely satisfied, you can cancel at any time. Try LiveWatch now by calling 1-800-670-9259. That's 1-800-670-9259. Now, a twice as nice Twin Kit special offer from Complete H2O Minerals for all GCN listeners. Get a Complete H2O Minerals Twin Kit with 33 different minerals, vitamins, and amino acids all in a liquid form. Enough for two people for one month. Regular price $89.95, but now Complete H2O Minerals is offering the Twin Kit for $69.95. And all GCN listeners receive a bonus 16-ounce bottle of Ionic Silver absolutely free with free shipping. A $120 total value. Hurry, limited time offer. Call 803-794-4767 or click CompleteH2OMinerals.com. We use mobile devices right against our bodies every day, but growing scientific evidence has emerged showing serious health risks associated with exposure to EMF radiation emitted from these devices. The solution is Defender Shield, the most effective mobile radiation shielding ever developed. Defender Shield blocks virtually 100% of EMF radiation from cell phones, tablets, and laptops and starts at just $64.99. Buy now at DefenderShield.com. For 10% off, use promo code GCN. DefenderShield.com, the worldwide leader in mobile radiation shielding. You are an individual with your own thoughts, decisions, and actions. So why should you be penalized for not enrolling in the subpar health insurance mandated by the government? Be truly independent. Visit libertyoncall.org. Libertyoncall.org is a bold, innovative alternative allowing you to take back control and make your own decisions about your health care. Mention this ad when you call to learn more. 800-714-6993. That's 800-714-6993. Libertyoncall.org. Call today. Hi, this is Mark Edge, host of Free Talk Live. We've been witnessing a meltdown of the very economic engine that powers this country. With a printing press tethered to Washington politicians, bureaucrats, and central bankers, how can we put our trust in paper money? For years, I've been buying gold and silver from Midas Resources, and you should too. Come see gold.freetalklive.com or call 877-357-9938 for a free book titled 10 Reasons to Own Gold. With Washington, D.C. delivering more debt and printed promises, common sense tells us the future of the trend is obvious. Everyone listening should visit gold.freetalklive.com or call 877-357-9938. I trust Midas Resources for my gold, silver, platinum, and you can too. Again, I want you to have this book, and it's free. It's gold.freetalklive.com or 877-357-9938. 877-357-9938. Healthy, organic, fresh fish, robust, mouth-watering vegetables, all from your home. It's called aquaponics. This brilliant, self-sustaining protein and veggie system is perfect for year-round growing. Know exactly where your food is coming from. Aquaponicsource.com is the one-stop shop for all your needs. Fish, fish food, plumbing, full systems, classes, and more. Learn to build your own system. Go to aquaponicsource.com for a free guide to aquaponics. That's aquaponicsource.com. You're listening to Free Talk Live. Call in toll-free at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-FREE. This is Free Talk Live. Moments remain, but we've got enough time for you. If you want to join us right now, you can. 855-450-FREE. If you don't get in tonight, no big deal. We do it seven nights a week, so you don't have to miss a moment of Free Talk Live. Even if you miss us on the radio, you can always go down to freetalklive.com and download archives. You can watch us live on the webcam when our internet connection is working, and it supposedly is now. Uh, so go and enjoy at freetalklive.com. Lots of features, all totally free. Those other talk show hosts in the business, a lot of them want to charge you for their websites. We do it free. Let's go to the phones to the fun. Brian, listening in Des Moines. You're on Free Talk Live. Hey, Brian. Brian in Des Moines. 
Hey there. Me and uh, how's it going? We got you. Go ahead, sir. Uh, all right. So, so me and mom, we have talked about having our children homeschooled, and you know, both of us, we we both have to work. Mom carries the insurance because it's too expensive for me to buy for my job. So we were we were wondering, like, could you have somebody else homeschool your child, or is that? Or does the one does the parent have to homeschool that child? Um, I would say that first off, uh, you know, rules vary from state to state, and you would have to get a get a hold of a, a local homeschool group in your area to find out the the answer, the actual answers to your questions. But there are things called you know homeschool co ops out there where you cooperate with other um, homeschoolers in, in the area. And most areas that I've found have homeschooling groups. So we've, you know, traveled a few different places. And when we go there, we find the homeschooling group, we hang out with those people. Um, And so there, you know, you can, for instance, if one parent's particularly good at teaching math or something, then they'll do the math teaching and then trade with a parent who does, you know, education on music or something like that. But if, if parents are too busy to, uh, you know, donate time, do they donate money instead? I can't or? answer how uh, these things go, but so you've never, you've never time done that. and money. Well, I have. we have given parents uh, compensation for, you know, watching our kid and stuff mm-hmm. like that. Sure. So that's an option. So, yeah, look into local homeschooling groups, Brian. That might be a good uh, starting point to really kind of connect with some people and, and find out how they do it. Because I imagine but, there are other parents who are in your exact circumstance. But what you're talking about is right. basically a homeschool co-op. And, yes, that exists. Okay. Well, I appreciate it. Yeah. Yeah, brother. Anything else you want to share tonight? Go ahead. No, no. I, that's all we, it's been on our mind for probably the last six months. And, and I'm starting to hear more people talking about it and doing it and we thought about doing it but it's so hard for for, like she like i said she carries the insurance because it's cheaper through her than it is for me and both of us can't quit our jobs yeah if you can figure out a way to make this work i think it'd be a really good thing i mean everybody that we've ever talked to who's been homeschooled has been so grateful for the fact that they didn't have to go to these government schools so if you can make this work i say it's worth the effort and what what's made you want to want to get your kid out of government school um, like my, my daughter, she, she's seven and, you know, she, she'll get up and just walk out of school because she's tired of, and this comes out of a seven-year-old's mouth. She says, I'm tired of having to wait on other people that don't understand our, our math and stuff. Yeah. So yeah. She'll, she'll leave. She's like, and I'm like, well, what, I'm like, what do you mean? And she's dead. She says, dad, I don't have a problem with, with everybody. But she says it's kids that come from other countries that don't understand our system that put me on the back burner of my education, and I have to sit and wait for them because they don't understand anything. Well, a lot of times uh, people from other countries are actually more interested in uh, in education, but it's, it's certainly true that – uh, whatever the case is, there are people in a government school class who are the lowest common denominator. They're the slowest learners, uh, whoever they are, and right. th- they're the ones that are holding the class back because everybody else who is, right. you know, is with it, is paying attention, is doing the, you know, the assignments or whatever. They're ahead, right. and they don't like to wait, and they shouldn't have to wait for everybody else to no, catch and, up. And and I, like you know, I went to a small town school where there were there wasn't any any foreign kids in our class so i mean i don't know if being in a small town made a difference versus a big city but um you know that i looked at my wife and i was like wow this is coming from a seven-year-old brian thanks for your call she tonight seeing the problem yeah i appreciate well the kids will know because they're the ones that are there every day thanks brian for the call i appreciate right. hearing from you our toll-free number is 855-453. I think it's important to point out that uh, people from other countries are tend to be the ones, uh, like India, for instance, uh, and Asia, tend to, tend to be the ones who are being the engineers in the governments, you know, that go through the schooling to be engineers and, like, really, really brilliant. Well, um, yeah, I mean, you know, oftentimes immigrants have the motivation to to do better. Sometimes their children don't because they don't know what it's like in uh, the home country. Mm -hmm. But that's, you know, those are just broad swaths. What really is the issue is um, class size, because uh, if you if the teacher didn't have 25 kids, but instead had five kids, um, they would be able to separate out the, um, you know, the the kids that are slower learners to the ones that are, um, you know, higher learners and that kind of thing. They tried to do that in my private school, 
in the the class of 20 kids, they teachers separated us out into three different reading groups. And I think this was second grade or third grade, something like that. I think it freaking it's, it's, it's scarred me for life being in the middle reading group instead of the highest reading group. But um, nonetheless, it, you know, they, they attempted to do that. My son, he's got a great class size. It's one student, two teachers. Boom. That's the best. Yeah. Can't beat that. So back to the court steps where apparently all you're going to be allowed to do is take a picture. Uh, according to the Washington Post, the Rutherford Institute had brought a case, and now uh, they have failed, sadly, at the appeals court level, where the appeals court upheld a 1949 law that basically restricts expression, freedom of speech, right there on the courthouse grounds in Washington, D.C. Now, one of the judges said the court is different from Congress, where people have a right to protest for political action. The plaza is designated as an extension of the court, he says, and restrictions on protests there need only be reasonable and viewpoint neutral. There is no suggestion that the law is discriminatory, he said. Quote, demonstrations supporting the court's decision and demonstrations opposing them are equally forbidden in the plaza. This is uh, what he added to that. Quote, unless demonstrations are to be freely allowed inside the Supreme Court building itself, a line must be drawn somewhere along the route from the street to the court's front entrance. Among the options, it is fully reasonable for that line to be fixed at the point one leaves the concrete public sidewalk and enters the marble steps to the court's plaza. So what do you think about that, Mark? The argument there being that, well, we certainly can't have people protesting inside the halls of the court. That could be disruptive to the court's operations. So therefore, we can just set that restriction at the sidewalk. Um, when he says that there's an arbitrary place that you set it, I, can, I think that's the best argument. Now, the, the previous arguments weren't that. I think this is the best argument that the state might be able to make or whomever uh, might be able to make in this circumstance. Because, yes, you do have to have an arbitrary place where the protest ends. Like, for instance, people cannot be protesting in the uh, jury uh, pool, yeah. uh, the, you know, where the jurors sit in, in a courtroom. Like, there has to be an arbitrary place. Right. A chanting protesters in a courtroom would probably not, you know, be very good for the trial. The difficulty with his statement is is that what he does, to some extent, by making this ruling, what the court, Supreme Court does is, is that it sets a precedent that people can't protest on the steps of the courthouses across America. If the Supreme yeah. Court, if you can't protest on the steps of the Supreme Court, then you can't protest on the steps of any court. And many places also have uh, rules against protesting on the sidewalk, and their sidewalks aren't as big and wide. Well, the, as they are in, out in front of the uh, Supreme Court. Right. Cities uh, may not have a rule against protesting on sidewalks, but they will have rules like, oh, you can't block the sidewalk. So right. you have to keep moving. You can't just stand there. And that's the way they kind of crack down on protesters without actually having a law that says you can't protest. So um, that's one of that's the difficulty here is is in picking the arbitrary spot that is in front of the steps as opposed to behind the steps. Um, one sets a precedent that is nationwide and likely would be um, you know referenced in these bans because governments don't like protest. When you're going out there and protesting the government, the government oftentimes doesn't like that. Go out in front of the police station and hold a sign that says um, you know the police are a bunch of killers and see whether your day is good or not <laughs> and then go hold a sign the next day or at a different police station and says i love cops mm. right and see how your day goes because this is you know you'll you'll get in all likelihood you will get a clear picture that the government dislikes it when you do not like what they do you don't have to agree with these signs you this is just an experiment i'm talking about and you will then find, huh, it turns out that when I say things that the government doesn't like, that they don't like it. And that's ultimately what this is going to come down to. The Rutherford Institute head, uh, head boss man John Whitehead noted in his statement the decision could be appealed and his organization is challenging the restrictions that the Supreme Court implemented on their property. But there was little expectation of success. He said, ironically, it will be the justices of the Supreme Court who will eventually be asked to decide the constitutionality of their own statute in this case. Yet they have already made their views on the subject quite clear. So he pretty much yep. knows this is futile, although they may go for it anyway. It's been Ian here with you. And Mark. We're back tomorrow night. You can join us online in the meantime at freetalklive.com. Check our Facebook and Twitter for all the show prep from tonight. It's Free Talk Live. If worse comes to worst... 
Will you be prepared? You don't have to be a survivalist to prepare for the unexpected. Storing necessary supplies like food, water, and emergency equipment is simply taking responsibility for ourselves and our families when it counts the most. StrategicShelters.com offers emergency supplies and a secure way to store them and provides protection for loved ones in the event of an extreme natural or man-made disaster. To find out more, visit